I was literally like, I do this thing where it's like, I'm arguing with these guys all the time in my head, this imaginary person that doesn't exist about like why COVID the whole whatever is whatever. And it's like, then I read this quote by Elder Thaddeus, you know, memento. Um, Elder Thaddeus wrote, uh, our thoughts determine our lives, which is a really fantastic Orthodox book. And, um, and I quote Elder Thaddeus, when there is an argument, we always go out of our way to convince the other person that he is wrong. That is how the atmosphere becomes tense. The other person argues and will not accept our correction. And, and as for us, we are wasting our time and disturbing our inner peace for nothing. If we have discernment. We will know who it is we are really talking to. We know that it is not our opponent, but the fallen spirit speaking through him. It is useless arguing with those who have been waging war against mankind for thousands of years and who are very agile and practice in this warfare against people. It's just like mic drop. Maybe, maybe I'm like developing some sort of syndrome because I know we're past graphs and charts and have been for a year, but I'm seriously thinking like, if someone was to try to like, <laughs> Cyprian will know he's so good with these things, right? He's going to pull something out and be like, well, it's this and this. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's just like, I've been in it so long now, I can't even remember the, the, the data anymore does that make sense like mm -hmm. i can't even remember data points that i gave people a year ago or whatever yep. i'm just like i just false that. dude oh like say now it's like are you kidding me this is all false it's like it's just false i, yeah, said, I can't even remember the I data can. anymore it's just like as i've been i've been staring at the blue wall for so long i don't even see blue anymore it's like yeah mm -hmm. by the way everyone hi welcome to royal path um, I'm your host, Andrew. I do this thing where I um, take pictures of everything. I screenshot like all the statistics and numbers that I find that I can, that I think are later going to be like ministry of truth out oh, yeah. or a ministry of information or whatever. I can't remember. Um, because like I got truth, yeah. ministry of truth. I never do this, but I did this this one time. Uh, I got a next door app and I was arguing with someone. But by the way, Nextdoor app is buck wild. Like Nextdoor app is next level. If you really want to be seeing like what's happening oh. and like. Well, that's where I saw my first like, whoa, we're going to see witch hunts. That's, I mean, I'll never, I'll never but, forget. That's exactly I, what I was talking about. This it was in my office, not like, you know, every man's office, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I was, that yeah. was in every man's office. And I was like, look, I was just, the only time it's worthy of scrolling through next door was in that when the, every man's office and i was yeah. like whoa this person is literally talking about going after and snitching on but that's what who were having gatherings yeah i couldn't believe it but and i and so i was arguing with this person and i never and this by me arguing i think they posted three times and i posted three times as a response to one another and um i said something along the lines of like it was when they were first, for maybe first started talking about a booster because the vaccine was suddenly not 100% uh, 100% effective anymore. And I remember being like, you know, what, are, I, what are you talking about? That's always been that. Then nobody ever, nobody ever, ever once ever said that's when I this started screaming from things. getting sick or from transmitting it. No one ever said that. It was never said. Now I have it screenshot. Stop with the misinformation, please. Don't you I remember we were wearing masks it. back in high school? Yeah, I, seriously. I, I wore one for my yearbook photo. <laughs> and I, I said, like, they said no one ever said it was. And I was like, I literally saw a story that said, and I went back and screenshotted it because I had to go find it. And then I, because now I got to I got to and I'm building like a thing in my phone. They're going to tell you Photoshop. 
Yeah, so well, I mean, it's ineffective, but it is like nice having being like, a, no, this is what it says right here. And it's Dude, like, I, I will tell you that there was, this was months ago where an interaction with somebody and it was like, you know, uh, both the Surgeon General and, oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't that. It was somebody posted a video of Fauci saying masks are ineffective. Yeah. They won't, they won't protect you. It would be dumb to wear it against a coronavirus. Yeah, wearing a mask would do nothing. Like it's, yeah. it's it shouldn't. And so this video is posted and it's like on date. It's a video from like Dateline or something like that. It's a clip. Yeah. And the person underneath it goes, I, I need to, what, what's the, what's the source of that video? And I was, and I, I responded, I was like, are you trying to insinuate that this is somehow like faked or like a deep fake or something like that? And they're like, yeah, I don't recall that ever being said. I, I, I think that this could be a, that this could be a fake. And I was like, this was like the biggest news a year ago, yeah. like 12 months ago. So this must've been back. Like the only time Fauci's ever said anything honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one honest thing he said was masks don't work. Yeah. <laughs> The fact that somebody thought that someone had gone out of their way to make a deep fake made it look exactly like ABC News. This guy's voice perfect, that there's some disinformation out there. And I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, yeah. this is this is wild. It's I know. Bad. It's, it's it is. Really and like bad. not only that, but like the Ministry of Truth, like does not even need like a building because it's like all like a bunch of blue haired bloggers that immediately go through and like go through all these things like, no, you're missing the context of what he said. Well, that's and the fact. Checkers. That's the fact. Checkers. And, but see, that's that's kind of a cool thing is because now I know when a fact checker has come along and fact it that the original thing was without a doubt true. Like, I mean, so like that tool is like <laughs> Is not very effective. Like, well, the headlines, the headlines will say such and such and such and such experts and fact checkers say. Now the head headlines will say this, where I'm like, fact checkers say, like, what is the qualification for fact checker? Is that like what is the what is, are you more qualified than me in going and looking? Because it seems like all they do is go and look up other articles and yeah. other things that people have said. My question for you is. Has there always been the fact checker that was part of the presidential debate? No, that was introduced with Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. She introduced it and said, we've got now a fact check thing to fact check Donald Trump. It's at factcheck.org or whatever. And you can go there during or after this debate because they'll be fact checking everything that Donald Trump says live. Wow. She, they introduced it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, something just struck me. Yeah. I think I think we should start over. I'm just something just struck me. We didn't pray, and like I don't know if any but anybody who's listening to us needs what we just said. Like I mean I don't know unless you think they do, Father. I mean we can well, let's we can just do this. It's gonna be super scandalous to see if we get canceled for this. We'll pray right now. That's <laughs> Father. <laughs> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We ask through the intercessions of the three holy hierarchs and of St. Athanasius the Great and of St. Mark of Ephesus and of all the holy fathers and mothers and righteous ones who stood against the deception of the world, the deception of the powers, and all those who would speak against your holy, mighty sovereignty and authority, Lord, through their intercessions. We pray for this meek and humble endeavor. Bless it, Lord, and may we speak only things that are pleasing to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so that is our take on that. And yes. I, I, mean, I stand by everything I said, 100%. I do, I, I do too. Cyprian and I, I were just talking about how and we don't have to get super into this and maybe father caught the tail end of it is cases and deaths are now kind of synonymous. Like they can't threaten people with there being enough deaths in an area. So there has to be new cases always. There always has to be like, well, there's, you know, usually the number is 30. Is this the equivalent of we were always at war with Eurasia? Actually, that's what I was saying in the end of that next door app is I was like, 
I was, they were like, no, 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 it's always been this way. It's always, and then I said something. I was like, oh, so we've always been at war with Eurasia. And then another person came in and was like, they're like, who said anything about Eurasia? And then the guy was like, oh, no, 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 it's a knuckle dragging reference to 1984. And I was like, and then I wrote the last thing I said was, oh, well, I thought it was pretty clever. And then like, that was like, and I'm out guys. Good luck. I hope we all don't die from this. Knuckle, weird a knuckle dragging. Yes. That's what knuckle draggers do. They they pull <laughs> references from classic literature. George that's Orwell's 1984. Yes, that is the mark of a knuckle dragger. Let me pull a, a literature, uh, <laughs> a classic literature reference out at you. I'm a knuckle dragger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously, yeah, I we're in bad it. shape. We're in bad shape. It's it's funny today because uh, I was talking with the nuns and I just. It wasn't anything in particular. It was just me being out and about, getting getting some Java. But I just, it was just, it was one of those moments where it hit me. I was like, we're in bad shape, man. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's, it's a little worse than than I expected, and it's it's worse because again, it'd be so much easier if there was like blood in the streets or something. It'd be yeah. so much easier. But this slow psychological boil, it's it's just it's warping people, and that I that's what's so disturbing to me. But that's what Cyprian and I were talking about. Is like we were talking about that Demi Lovato alien. Oh, um, we're gonna hold on. We're gonna sh- we're gonna show this. We're gonna oh, show. Okay. This. Yeah, let's, Father, have you seen this? Let's get let, into let it. Me, let me preface. Let me preface because it's it, it is totally appropriate. All of this happened in the last couple of days, so it is totally on point because we are at this point in the creed we 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 did light of light last week wonderful conversation so we are at uh one lord jesus christ the son of god the only begotten begotten of the father before all ages light of light true god of true god begotten not made of one essence with the father by whom all things were made so we're on true god of true god I think we got to spend a whole episode on on this Mm -hmm. and maybe one of the ways because this is the the bad shape i want to show i want one video is kind of long so i'm going to go through the pieces and we can kind of comment but i want to start out with the demi lovato video that we were talking about father so you can see this now what's what i found interesting about this video i'm going to preface it with this that most of the people that i saw looking at this were like she's just crazy she's on drugs laugh at her all of this okay but at least two individuals both of them in your parish there's three three now one of one of one of them my godfather saw the video and posted oh nephilim that's how you get nephilim okay I'm going to show you right now. A lot now. of raised eyebrows in this episode, by the way. Where is I'm going to show, show you right now. This, this. Well, let me, let me not trick anybody here. Let me go to the, go to this one. Okay. And here's the video. Uh, let me pull it up. One second. Okay. Optimize. Yes. Here we go. Make sure I go back to the beginning. Here we go. Let me know if you can't hear it. I decided to sing for them, and they went off when I finished. They I applied. never had a standing ovation from ghosts. I love it. But this, I'd like to think they were The standing, standing ovation with my feels is otra, otra, otra. <laughs> You've made contact. I have made contact. It's not been in like the ET phone home type of right. sense, but I have made contact by meditating and looking up and seeing things in the sky that weren't there when I started meditating. So now that you've made contact with ETs, mm-hmm. maybe not this kind of contact just yet. <laughs> not yet. But if there was an ET that hit every box of criteria that would be like the most ideal partner. Like, would you yes. date an ET? Yes, absolutely. I'm so tired of humans. <laughs> I'm so tired of humans and their human bull <laughs> I am so over it. I Bring love it. Bring me an alien. Uh, Bring yes. me an ET. I decided to sing. Jesus. Oh <laughs> 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 You're so done. <laughs> Yeah. How, <laughs> how how is this? How are we? How have we reached this point? Wow. 
Wow. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of like. So, so first off, they're not. They're they're demons. They're oh yeah. I mean, so I've I've been reading Father Spirit on Bailey's book, and it's fantastic. I advise to everyone the UFO deception. Wonderful, wonderful, great, fantastic. More like, orthodoxy in the religion of the future. That's a well, big... yeah, and this is like the follow. This is like the follow up to uh, Father Seraphim Rose's chapter in there on the UFOs, right? So you can oh. you should read that. You should read. Father Seraphim Rose's book first, and then this is like if you want to branch off of the UFO chapter, this takes and like expands it out 20, 20 or 30 years more of stuff in it. Right on. Wonderful. So they're demons. I think, Father, maybe we can start there. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, they're 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 demons, and even um, and even. Uh, and even for someone who wants to try to approach the subject from a very um, academic approach, which I which can be problematic or scholastic approach would be problematic is even in the fact of her calling them ghosts. That's interesting too, because you know, the kind of disembodied spirits, right? That really are the, the source of, of what we get the term Nephilim, right? That in of itself is even the accuracy of her state calling them ghosts is interesting to me, but they're, they're definitely demons. And and it's funny because she, so when, I'm not really familiar with her. Um, is she like a Disney star? Yep. yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, and without getting too into it, she, I thought Cyprian and I talked about this pre-show about this whole like, she tried to get sober and then that opening up that gateway of like her spiritual faculties, it's really easy to fall uh, into this. Yeah, 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 so yeah, then yeah. she relapsed and now she's like, not owned it. She's like, I'm, I'm transgender and um, I can drink and use drugs in moderation and all that kind of stuff. So it broke bad. This is interesting to me too, because this is the whole, remember, I think it was, was the last week we were talking about Greer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. His this is her. Yeah. Yeah. She's all about Greer. She's like, she's they do an interview person. together. Like, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He was the person that did the interview where Greer was like, it's racist to call extraterrestrials aliens uh, using the word racist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the heat that they're bringing. Yeah. So, so I mean, just that whole spirit of the age, I mean, it's all plugged in because it's not even about marketing, right? It's literally like the, the, the spirit, which is, having all the points covered and everyone is using the same mantra, if you will, if I could use that term loosely, all these points being touched on. And it's funny because that whole like line of not just thought, but of experience of um, kind of like recognition and then, you know, kind of a crash and burn addiction, right? And then this, this kind of like pseudo resurrection right? Because mm -hmm. what it does is it gives this measure of validity, as well as kind of sympathy to allow people to say, well, you know, don't judge, don't this and that. Basically, don't look at this discerningly. Don't look at this situation with any type of discretion. Well, this poor thing, look what she went through. All, all of the buttons are hit. There's the, there's the emotional aspect, which causes someone to not look at it discriminately. There's the issue in regards of her being a Disney star. So having this um, nostalgic aspect, maybe for some people that's gonna touch on it. All, all of these points of manipulation, emotionally and psychologically for people, to me, that's also another aspect of it beyond just the obvious thing of like, she's talking about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically, you know, the whole incubus Nephilim thing, but besides all of that, right? Yes. Just on that level, you know, if, if I if I may, the kind of sociological tool that's being used there, right? It's it's definitely high level, it's definitely demonic, but it's so fascinating because this is part of the problem that people have is they don't realize that when we talk about demonic for so many people, they 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 are still thinking spinning heads, spitting pea soup, you know, slamming doors, and like that's all kind of there, whatever. But the thing is, is because people don't see it like this, they don't see how ubiquitous these concepts are. And that the fact that they are so ubiquitous, that's why people are falling into them so easily. And 
little 12 year old, 13 year old girls will think, hey, I'm transgender now. Because the next step from there is like, hey, I want to have an ET boyfriend too. I want to be able to, you know, it's not that, it's not far fetched, clearly, right? Because no. once, once their childhood idol starts saying it, and once it gets the airplay, and once no one challenges it, no one's challenging that. And anyone who's going to challenge it, they're stepping on those sensitive emotional strings and they're going to be demonized. Oh, you, why, you know, you're racist. Why are you calling them aliens? Or what, just let her be. Why can't she love an alien? Why can't she love a ghost? Like, even from a, like, non-religious context, that sounds absurd. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's how far gone we've fallen off the cliff. It no does, be, because then there's ahead. also, like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, well, I'll just go ahead. I'll plow on through. Um, that there's even that, like, uh, Cyprian and I were talking about this, um, which, I mean, maybe it was the tea, but it was one of my finer hours, so, like, uh, maybe I find a way to get it to you, Father, because we were talking about, like, the emotional, like, and spiritual potholes that people fall into or trip them up in early sobriety, and I was talking with Cyprian about this uh, lady I knew, I mean, blue hair, I mean, she was gay, like, so there's, you know, obviously, you know, some things already happening there, um, as far as, like, where the spiritual state was at, and, um, I remember she was less than, like, 120 days sober, or something like that, and she was already, like, and this is, like, 2016, maybe, 2015, she was already on board, like, the transhumanism, mm -hmm. she was, like, oh, yeah, one day we'll, we'll get to leave this stuff behind, and it's, just, like, the discomfort of your early sobriety and like the some of the things that you're having to like own up to and face up to have got, has got you in such a state that you're ready to like get rid of your body like you'd rather like get to like this whole other and then that spoke a little bit about like well then what are we willing to do to avoid pain and it's like if that's what it takes to get rid of the the horrible and mind you absolutely ridiculously uncomfortable horrible feelings that come with early sobriety like i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy like but the idea of like well the only way to escape this and i'm already on board is the slightest glimmer of hope which is in the next three decades or whatever i might be able to transfer my consciousness into like a robot body and then not to deal with this crap anymore and it's like now especially post 2020 i'm like that is ridiculous that is absolutely bonkers and well, this, I, this, uh, this brings up that's I, I had not ever thought about this in terms of transhumanism. But since we are on true God of true God, the, the fact of Christ being truly God and truly man, like both of both of the pieces and the fact that we are a, a, a body and a soul. There's this heavy spiritual implication of somebody saying, well, let's ditch the mm -hmm. physical. Like, because it's, first off, it's an absolute denial of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because if, the, if our, if our right? Because if our job right. was to teach the physical, why did he come into the physical? Right. Maybe, Father, you could expand, but it just, it, it no, you're, no, right you're, wrong, man. Like, you're, you're, you're on it. You're on it because fundamentally, one of the things that, that we're dealing with, and you can't help but just see it really clearly, is that there's, you, you just roll this thing down, okay? If there is a God, right? then what you're saying is, right? When you say, I'm so done with these humans, you're like, you start to fundamentally become opposed. You become an enemy of God's plan. You become an enemy of God's will. You become an enemy of God's good intention, right? Understanding God as we understand and know and experience the living God, right? Now, this is where it becomes tricky is that it's almost like we do a lot better now in this conversation, maybe just giving up the farce of atheism. Like that's, that's a distraction at this point because yeah. what we're dealing with is people who are totally fine with something. You know what I mean? It's um, what's, uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forget her name. What's Elon Musk's ex-partner's name? Um, Grimes or the yeah. other one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's Brian. she's something. She's I, something. I spent about probably a few weeks ago, I spent maybe 25 minutes diving deep into her. I had never known really about her. I did a deep dive on her for about a half hour and I was shocked. I was shocked. What's up? What's up? Well, I was 
not necessarily not necessarily shocked at what she said. I was shocked at the kind of validity of the message, the validity of the means of the message. I should say, excuse me, the means in which she's communicating all of this is so acceptable, so valid right now. Like there's, it's getting back to what I was saying earlier. Like, I know some people may just be shaking their head at me, but like what I what I saw was, look, this chick, for as staged as some of the stuff she's, some of her poses, you know, there's a staged photo of her reading the Communist Manifesto in this kind of like garb, like that's like she's like like they like candidly saw her on the corner reading. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see through it, but the but but the point is is in spite of all of that kind of stagery and mirrors and smoke and mirrors it's it's working like I, I was shocked to see how many followers she had how many people are really like with the, res the response to some of her tweets response to some things it's just like she is literally to some to no small portion of <laughs> a society a, 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 a religious leader in many ways and well, it was Elon Musk. Oh, Elon Musk, absolutely. She's, but she's aesthetically, like right. you look at her and she is the, the aesthetics, she's the aesthetics of tr transhumanism, uh, everything. She I does. mean, she is, if you, from my perspective, if someone wants to present to me a very rigorous, staunch, legitimate academic uh, who's pro transhumanism, I go like, it doesn't matter. Whoever that guy is, he doesn't matter. He matters insofar as maybe something he's written, something he said, or she said, whatever, has, inf has informed her. I'm looking at this Grimes lady and I'm like, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. Because she's, she's taken, just like you said, the aesthetic, the kind of spirit, all of these things and made it such a valid packageable means of communicating this doctrine. It's just like, oh, I just looked into what the next 25 years is gonna look like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the problem is, we're having this conversation and even people who are listening to the podcast, like we're, the general audience is, our general audience, let's say small, whatever, let's say that it's a, it's a pretty, pretty specific demographic, even though I, I like to think it's pretty varied. Don't think about you. Don't think about what you look like. Don't think about your friends at church. Don't think about even like your friends at work. I want you to look at your, I want you to look at like your nine, to 12, you're, you're, you're six to 12 year old kid. And, and that's what I'm talking about. That's, a, and that's, that's, what, that's what, that's my point. That's what's so frightening to me is, is it's not about us right now. Cause we can be like, oh no, that's, that's still just crazy. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like there are kids now, right? I'm, I have one particular kid in my mind whose parents make choices to just kind of like follow the whatever. And within a year, this little girl she thinks she's binary or whatever right yeah it's it's really happening right and so god help us think about all these kids who have are going to have how many years of zoom school how many years of wearing masks how many years of not seeing a face okay let's bring it back to true god true god you don't understand and experience god primarily or exclusively the true God through reading about God. You have to experience God through the, through the human faculty, which also means seeing human faces, the prosopome, the face, right? Mm -hmm. The person and the face, like the, there's a connection in the etymology there, right? That's why the face is so sacred. That's why in some iconography, it's proper you know, I do this too, I do this myself, is reducing something down sometimes to where you only see like the shoulders or just the head of the, of the, of the saint. Why is that, right? The iconographer at times will boil everything down. You don't need to see the feet. You don't need to see the hands. You know that's there. Because once you see the human face, once yeah. you see the expression, once you encounter that humanity, you already know that's it's the ultimate symbol. The human face is the ultimate symbol of God because you already know what's coming in there. Hands, feet, soul, emotions, intelligence, love, justice, mercy, all those things are communicated through the full visage of the human face, right? And that's what the metaverse is removing. 
That's what they want to remove. They want it because you won't be represented to anyone else with your with the, your real human face. So then I have to ask Father, Father's uh, uh, painting's not the right term, right? It's writing. Right. Like, writing okay. icons, painting icons. That's fine. Okay. So I noticed a lot of icons. It seemed like they were finished, and this is like several of them, except for the eyes. Is it traditional or something to like paint the eyes last? Is that something that's like done a specific way in iconography? I don't know. Maybe that seeing nothing, but it seemed like there was a like three or four icons that didn't. Everything else seemed done. Except. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times. I mean, that's something that I'll, I'll do as well. Is like I'll paint the eyes last, right? There's this idea of it's you know that that's the last little bread little bit of breath being breathed in there. That's what um, I was. That's what I was there, wondering. There's a term, the jivke. It's the, it's it means the life giving stroke. There's these strokes uh -huh. that are that have to do around the eye, and around certain highlights around the eye. Like there's these characteristic like three highlights around the eye. Mm -hmm. A little bit of like the jivke. It's this life giving stroke where it's like, boom, it hits right. That's, no. and, and I would just say, very interestingly enough, this idea is. It's truth, right? It's it's and this truth is born witness in other traditions, right? So, in the practice of uh, in the Japanese practice, and forgive me, I don't know the uh, proper term anymore. It's been so long, but the the there's the practice of painting the dragon. You would always paint the eyes of the dragon last, right? So, this this is a reality, right? This there's there's the phenomenology of this is accurate. It's true, right? And it bears witness in, in, in the icon primarily and foremost. But I do want to say this real quick before we, we move off of the icon. It's interesting to me too, because one of the things that God forbid, but I anticipate, I, I already saw some of it a couple years ago, like, the, like right, I remember seeing more of it right at the beginning, right before all the, um, the nonsense started happening, but I I fear we will begin to see a greater proliferation of people trying to adopt the the iconographic aesthetic, and here here's why. Because it's an it's an inspired language, and it's an inspired language that speaks primarily and exclusively to the truth of the church. So if you follow what I'm saying, it isn't a generalized language. It doesn't just speak to Christianity in general, right? Because that's part of the, that's been part of the attack, which has been very good, is to water everything down. It's all the same to give people a generalized understanding of Christianity, quote unquote, homogenized, mm -hmm. washed out, mm -hmm. which gives them this, which, which gives people this tabla rasa of God, this kind of blank slate by which they could project whatever they want onto God. The icon says no, right? The icon is, a, is this incredible barricade and barrier against that subjective projection of who God is, which is everything. Because once you get people to a greater degree trying to mess with that, you got real problems. It, it's it's very much in the same way, which I don't know we've talked about it here on the world path. Maybe one day we'll get to it, but you know I stand by, you know, and I, I'll go on record. I stand by that all this was ultimately about getting to the church and about getting to the liturgy and about getting to the holy Eucharist. I stand by that. I, I think do. that's I think that's a bigger that that's a that is I think everything else in regards of how quickly the programming has has fallen into into place how quickly the conditioning has happened to me that's proof that it wasn't even about that does that make sense to me the fact that it's been so seamless and and it's been adopted by the whole world so seamlessly and so without any real fight that proves to me it wasn't ever about that because the, the job was already done sure the real job that the thing indoor done. assembly covering the covering the mouth mm -hmm. you know you look and you're just like mm -hmm. what who what would this mm -hmm. what is like sure it would change a, a lot of things in society but you look at what is the thing that it would 
upset that is the most ancient. Like, let's start at the oldest thing mm-hmm. that is still being practiced that this would be an immediate upsetting of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that there were, you know, they were there were raids on churches and they made churches shut their doors. And all. when you're like, Costco's open. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. Hey, the weed farm is open. Weed farm's open. The Tar- bar's open. Liquor stores. There were places that, that had liquor stores open and churches closed. Yeah. Yep. That's how you that's how you know. That's how you know. That's how you know. And and that reality is everything about who the true God is. I mean, but that's also I'm sorry, I'm a little late to the game, but that is immediately what the conversation turned to when there started being divisiveness in the church is the reality of God. Like, I mean, because that's exactly because, and I remember there was a specific member that eventually took umbrage with our stance that is like, well, we're not changing the Eucharist, nothing, blah, blah, blah. Like that's, that's the body and blood of Christ. And only later did it click that I had talked to this person and I had talked about, I have a really big problem with drinking after people, like drinking and eating after people. It's just always been a thing of mine. And um, they're like, oh, did that bother you with the Eucharist? And I was like, at first, probably before I took communion for my very first time, I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of weird, but okay. But not since then, because instantly I was like, no, this is the body and blood of Christ. Like nothing impure is in this. Right. At least and, I think that's how I remember it. Going. Right. And, but see, honestly, that, that, that gets the point across because one of the things that you'll notice is these clerics with their sophistry, <laughs> they come in and they want to give all these excuses. And I'm like, you know what, man? I'm going to take the simple faith of that kid, of that old lady, of that guy repenting over your quackery, over yeah. your wordsmithing and, and all your shibboleth. I'm not, I'm not hearing it, right? Because the fact is these people are encountering God, mm-hmm. right? You can, that, that's, that's the reality is, is people are encountering God because they're, they are giving their lives of God. And that encounters with the true God, which that's what we are up against in regards of getting back to what I think is the next stage is I don't want to, I don't know if the right word would be kind of like a um, adoption, but it definitely is going to be in the line of trying to, again, to, it's not going to be the head on anymore. It's going to be more of this. It's, it's antichrist, right? Understanding not opposed, but in the place of. This. Oh, I've, got, I've got something for us, Father. I prepared something. It was another thing that happened this week. I've got it. I've got it. Softball he, underhand pitches all night, man. <laughs> I mean, he, I just want to say really quick, I, I think it's crazy that we're in a world where we literally just watched a video where a lady said, I would definitely like date an ET. Yeah. And Father Turbo's like, we can't have it be in our face anymore. Like, that is still subtle. Like, Well, okay, so right. all Grimes, while you were talking, I pulled this up because it's related to the ETs. This was one when it came up, I thought it was super weird. Um, huh. And Father, this is like totally uh, right up your alley. Hold on, let me let me change the the share to be a little bit. Oh, hold on, yeah, hold on. I'll I'll bring it up. Whoa! She, when she shared this back in April. She said uh, it goes all the way down her back. I'm not showing the whole picture because it's uh, probably not appropriate for this, uh, but it goes all the way down her back below her like a uh, hip bone, even like to the, probably that probably to her tailbone. It looks like it's white ink. But what's interesting is that she called it alien scars. Huh. Alien, it's white ink. There it is. At her, well, this is the whole photo. I wasn't going to show that. But anyway, so wow. alien scars on Grimes. I just thought it was like, what? A, and she said she designed it herself. Yeah. And my, my wonder in it is like, <laughs> you designed it yourself, but who gave you the design? That's, That's right. my question, right? Like alien scar, scars of what? What did they, are you the alien? Yeah. Are they giving you the scars? Did you have an encounter? Like, are you physically manifesting? Very weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow. Okay, but here's the... So, here's... This one was this week. 
grand opening of the Sphinx of Sphinx oh, yeah. in Luxor, Egypt. I've got the whole video here, but I'm not going to do the whole video, guys. But I'm going to scroll through because there's not a single part of this that isn't like, what are we doing? So here we go. We should all watch Stargate. This really happened. I'll start here. Whoa. They really did this, bro. Whoa. With the president and his wife in attendance and all of the Senate and everything. Isn't this supposed to be a Muslim country? They really did this. Like, this is happening in real life. You bring up an interesting point, they're, too. They're, Isn't this supposed to be a Muslim country? Look, they're in Muslim headscarves. These are the dignitaries. Isn't this a mono? Isn't this? Isn't this? No, they're they're all supposed to be Muslims. They paid for this. Look at this. This was what I. This is what I thought was crazy. Oh yeah, I saw that. I mean, those are boats for pagan gods. They've got the gods on them. Can you pause real quick? What's that? Pause it? Yes, pause. Okay. I know we've said this a couple of times. It just, it has to be said for the record. Just, these are supposed to be Muslims. Yes. They supposed straight paraded an idol <laughs> right, right down the middle and they're just right they paid for it. the government paid for this this is government funded this is not private funded oh it really spared no expense either too because that is oh. it's incredible yeah it's bonkers it's incredible it's better than anything the egyptians themselves ever did like oh. the ancient comedic Egyptians, they never did anything like this. Sure. They got incense bowls and stuff in there. Yeah. Got... <laughs> and what? All it's right. like the first time in three thousand years, right? Yes. Yes. So, so they... they, the old gods are back, guys. Look at this. Look at what's happening here. They've got boats. All of these people are supposed to look, every single one of them. Okay. Do we have, uh, do we have the, I think we've got the idea. I think we've got the idea. You know one of the problems with that too? Go ahead. It's it's the same thing with, with all this other stuff is that someone's going to watch that. I, most people watched it who, who are watching. They'll hear the, the bad Disney music. Yeah. Or whatever. And they'll just roll their eyes at it. That, see, that's the problem where that's. No, there was an actual religious. There was a, a an ancient pagan ceremony to God, to ancient gods taking place. Yes. Where it used to take place. Yes. What I'm trying to say to you is that we understand it's that. it in cheese. We, yeah. we, we understand that. But the, the look, this, this is, I was sharing this with a couple of brother priests today, right? But in regards of, you know, uh, data and spreadsheets and graphs, right? But the problem is, is people who should know better They'll look at this and they'll look at what we're trying to explain and go like, roll their eyes. No, no, no. It's just some cheesy show they put on. It's just entertainment. It's just tourism, whatever it is. To that, to me, that's the real problem because, okay, they're bringing back, they, they are chipping away the veil and pretty soon that dam is going to break. 
already has, already has, right? But I can deal with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I am prepared as much as God allows to deal with that. What is troubling is people who should be with us being like, yes, yes, yes. They're like, no, <laughs> what's, what's the problem, right? Uh -huh. And this to me, this is the interesting thing about, you know, let us never neglect the Old Testament. And then as, let us never think that we aren't Israel. Let us never think that, right, the, there's just the continual blindness of Israel being like, oh, what's the problem? What's the problem? Seeing people in the face of such obvious lunacy, such obvious wickedness, such obvious things, such it's to just roll their eyes at it, it it's mind boggling to me. And, and, and might I add, not a single person there was wearing a mask. <laughs> I good didn't even good that. point. Wow. Not good. a single person. But close good. to church. I didn't even did. notice that. Close to churches, though. Close to churches, close but to we could churches. have thousands of people in close proximity to each other to perform ancient pagan rites by the Sphinx. Incredible, man. Well, that one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite stories is that um, I don't know exactly what the context is for it, but there's like an ancient Babylonian god that was linked to being in Nephilim or being involved with Nephilim in some way, and that um, engraving uh, into like stone or whatever is at our art museum in Kansas City, and uh, so. A long time ago, and this is secondhand knowledge, so if I get any of these details wrong, I'm sorry. But this is one of my favorite stories is they decided to hire this like Native American shaman to come like do like a cleansing ceremony or something at the at the museum. And um, these like Henry and liberals were probably like, oh, this would be so nice for like engaging the indigenous people. It looks so great for us. And the guy basically did the enchant or the enchantment or spell or whatever. Um, the ceremony and came back to them he's like yeah this place is really really messed up i can't do anything here like you have some extremely messed up energy here and father and i have talked about there's a whole hindu section of that that museum we can't go to like i i've gone in there and just get bugged out and like have to leave because it's so clearly infested 100 <laughs> percent. and then not only that that was before i realized that this piece of that tablature or not tablature that this this big stone engraving of this nephilim of this like um oh i'm, I'm gonna screw up the civilization but it's babylonian babylonian it's a babylonian like deity it's like okay well then when i started finding out about this stuff it's like okay well then that's just like a demon that they either had like incredible contact with or an outright like nephilim and it's just sitting there in the museum not too far away from allegedly, and I don't know if this is true, a relic of St. John the Baptist. Like not too far away from that. Which so, having, having a relic in a museum like that in of itself is a crime. 100%. It shouldn't even be, you know. Um, it's interesting to me too, because it, again. It's like the opposite of Indiana Jones. It shouldn't be in a museum. It shouldn't be. Like the reality, see one of the things that it's hard for people to understand too is that this idea of the museum, it totally circum it's, it totally circumvents people's ability to really um, perceive some of these realities, right? Because it engages this overactive kind of like rationalization, if you're following right. what I'm saying. It, someone walks in there like, oh, this is just a museum. So automatically what that means is no matter what that object was used for, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Because now it's just a sterile piece of, yeah, it's a sterile artifact, right? But the reality of it is, is that these, I mean, I would, I would love to have something in front of me now because I'm sure if we did a nice little study, just a quick study, of, you know, the kind of establishment of museums, I bet there's. Scooby Doo stories up the wazoo about things that they encountered. I mean, I oh, just remember. Yeah. Like when they were like raiding Tutankhamun's tomb and all the crazy stuff that happened with that. It's like this whole, the whole, it's just funny because it's just, that's how the world works. Um, forgive me for scandalizing everyone, but it's people like to look at porn. They don't want to think about all 
all the back end that happens there. The mafia uh, involvement, the drug point. involvement. Do, do you see what I'm saying? The, interesting point. Like they don't want to think about all of that, right? And so for them, it becomes as simple as like, well, this is just who am I hurting? It's only gratifying my own tastes and my own personal desires. Maybe, maybe if you're honest enough to say your lusts, maybe, right? But everything else is cut off. When in, when in reality, right, there's a whole backdrop of absolute depravity, which is right. real, actual, and manifested in the world, mm -hmm. right? Like, and it just, it, it facilitates it and it keeps the machine moving. Well, and you're giving, you give attention back in chronological. It, yeah, that's, this is interesting when we start talking about time again, because it's like you, your attention in the present is, sends that energy mm -hmm. back through the past in some way. And because it validates, it validates, it, it, yeah. it validates all of that. Your attention just validated all of the activity that took place. And so it's like that pattern is now you've added into that pattern. So of course it manifests. Into yeah, it. Because the other piece of it too, is that what people don't understand. And unfortunately, like a lot of us don't understand it. We need to understand it more is that that's what we are. Like man is part, forgive me for breaking it down this way. It's not exact. So, you know, call the seminary on me. I don't care. Like, <laughs> man is part animal part angel let's say like that's that's what we are right and so what people miss out on is that the aspect that incorporeal aspect of it is the actual the more real aspect right do you guys remember i was i, I gave that analogy it, it it probably didn't play too well back then but i'm i'm pulling it back in I remember a couple episodes ago i was talking about like the dollar bill and like imagine the dollar bill but you have the counterfeit but there's also the real one yeah, like, about a credit yeah. card yeah which credit one's card, more, credit card yeah the yeah, credit yeah, card right yeah. credit card. Yeah. which one's more real right well the right. One they're that both real right they're all real right but which one has has the power right right so this is the thing that people miss out on is that we have the, that's that's one of the huge problems with the materialist perspective is that the actual powerful part of us and the, the the part of the world that is operating and plunging everything into darkness the more real part of it is the part that everyone ignores right because that invisible aspect of thoughts which affects emotions which affects behaviors that it does it's not the other way around people got it twisted yeah. it's not the behaviors that affect your feelings, your it's 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 not the molestation, it's not the murder, it's not like all the things that are horrifying, all the things that cause quote unquote trauma, it's not the act in the material realm that's the source. It's the thought. It's the thought is the thing that has the real power. Because the right? thought has to precede the action. The thought it must precede, necessarily. The thought precedes the action. And the thought is a real phenomenon. It, it's we understand it as existing on a plane, right? Mm. And so this is what people are, this is what people just do not understand. That's why the deeper you get into the spiritual life, things start having to change for you because you realize what I thought I was watching, which was no big deal, yeah. Lord have mercy, it's the biggest deal. Yeah. It, it's more impactful than what I'm eating, right? That reality, right, is, and it cuts both ways right? The book of Deuteronomy, what does Deuteronomy mean? It means remembrance, right? This ability for us to access, for us with the past, but it's not the past in the spiritual realm, right? For us to access the past, for us to access, quote unquote, the acts of God, right? That's powerful. That, that, make, that can make the difference between life and death for someone. That's the difference between, you know what? Everything in my life is terrible, quote unquote, and something's been telling me to kill myself, but I'm not going to do that because I remember when God did this for me. Mm. Boom, the darkness is dispelled, right? That's why the reading of scripture, the, the meditation of, of the Psalms, the reading of the Holy Fathers, the prayers of the church, right? 
see one of the problems with extemporaneous prayer is number one how do you know it's any how you know it's valid right mm. but there's something about when you access the prayers of the church when you open a prayer book and you begin to pray the prayers that holy men and women have prayed for centuries that are that those prayers are, are living it's like a living stream of water you jump into this place of remembrance and it has the power to dispel these very real thoughts, these very real presence of demonic energy and power and all that stuff that's looking to kill you. Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. You just got me excited because it has to do with St. John Chrysostom. But that's like during his Akathist, when we were reading the Akathist the other day, it was like using your words, you ask, we ask for like to be like not burned by communion and to give thanks afterwards. Mm -hmm. And like, like using your words, we're able to do this. And then not only that, but I was reading him the other day and it struck me and uh, it doesn't have to be a whole thing, but he was talking about how like the thought, uh, the burning of like fleshly passion mm -hmm. is more damaging than fire, than actual burning. And I was like, and it really, I don't know why at that moment it hit me. He's like, oh, he's not like being glib here. He's not being cute. Like he's not saying like, oh, this will wreck your soul, honey. Like, you don't want to do this. It's like, no, 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 no. Actually, it's much more on a very real way, much more damaging than burning your hand, you know? And I was like, oh, and I don't know why it clicked with forgive that. Me, forgive me. I just want to say this. Like, this is one of the things everyone's to be. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I, I stopped going to the internet for any type of anything for a long time now in regards of like quote unquote orthodoxy, but like, I don't know at this point if people would understand what I'm saying here, but you have to be careful. There's a lot of people who they'll talk about the fathers, they'll talk about this and this and that. They may even be experts, blah, blah, blah. But there are people, if you cornered them, if they, they, they there are people who I, I, I suspect they would they would turn their eyes they turn their nose up and roll their eyes at saint john if they met him they would look at saint john chrysostom if they talked to him now and be like oh you actually believe all? like <laughs> like they would be shocked that he wasn't just speaking in poetic hyperbole you know what i'm saying like sure. that is a problem because at what point in time did god change hmm. right that this is this is where that kind of protestant ethos is way more pervasive and influential, influential than people realize. Because at what point in time is someone going to read the words of St. John Chrysostom, St. John Damascene, heck, Elder Cleopa, right? Mm -hmm. Heck, St. Sophroni. When are they going to read them and be like, well, they would, go, they would have gone along with all this other stuff too, speaking specifically about all these shenanigans, liturgical shenanigans with the mass and the communion spoons, you know what I mean? They, someone, you have to be so far gone to actually think that you're talking about the same God now. Like you who are doing everything you, like anything that comes along to change the church for the sake of the vaccine and COVID and all that. If you think you're talking about the same God as St. John Chrysostom, I don't know what to say to you anymore. Yeah. Like, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's a there's a huge disconnect for them that is so obviously what, what the fathers would never go for. What do you what do you mean? Like that is God. You are encountering you're encountering the true God. Like, and the profundity of God's manifesting to us in such gentle and humble means as bread and wine, right? The fact of God revealing himself to us in such humble and gentle means as scripture, like. All these things just reinforce the reality of God. But for these other people, it's, it's become just a means of sophistication and a more gentle, I, I don't even know, it, but it, it's definitely not the, it's definitely not the, the God of the fathers. Yeah. Right. It's definitely not the God that's been revealed in the lives of the martyrs. And, and, and the thing that's sad, what's, well, it's actually wonderful, but it's sad on one hand is it's been the people who have, who have seen it. It's been the simple people that have said, this is not right, right? 
the those leaders and hierarchs, all these people who have capitulated to lawyers and they're worried about getting sued, like they show who their God is. Clearly, mm. clearly, I stand by that. Clearly. Render unto Caesar. If you're scared of getting sued in what court? Yeah. What court? Si who sits in judgment uh, on that lawsuit? Bingo. Man or God? Bingo. If there's a theme tonight, I've noticed this is like obscuring truth. Like so far, we've talked to like Father's given several different examples of like ways of like either like in the case of that procession, like couching it in cheese and kind of like over the top like campiness, mm -hmm. like couching it in that or like hiding behind whatever to be able to dismiss like words of fathers and you know um or like uh what was the other disney, one? Oh, the museum your, your favorite disney star coming in and telling you the most foul disgusting thing or trying to copulate with a demon is just really and that is that is super foul too it's foul. it's not like the the fact that they're it's really it's foul. really disgusting it's foul it's I mean, really nothing I'm sorry, go ahead, Cyprian. You're, Father, to your point about this, it's so poignant, this idea of when did God change? And it's this ET thing. I was telling Andrew, I posted that Demi Lovato uh, video on my Twitter. And then this guy, I'm assuming it's a guy, could, could be a woman, but engaged me, has a little gray alien as their icon. <laughs> I don't know. Has a little gray alien as their <laughs> avatar. So they're very obviously very much into this sort of thing. And they said, well, what it's an it's been an interesting little back and forth because it's it's the person says, Well, this is this is the universe is way bigger than that. Thank th really, I'm very thankful to Father Spirit on and I, I've been reading reading his book because i was just like all this person's things that they were saying i was like oh this person's really like just being deceived and deluded they were like it's a big universe and like there's ample evidence to believe that there's all of these other life on other planets and all of this and and the christian description of this mm -hmm. of them being Bingo. demons is over is oversimplified and all of this and i said wait okay first hold yeah. on hold on one there is zero evidence even i'm i'm like listen we at the end what it came down to was i said there's two things i'm saying two sta i'm gonna say two statements one you and i both believe that there are these entities and that they are interacting with human beings we both believe that two there is absolutely zero evidence that these entities exist anywhere besides on this earth and the second that you all of these encounters have taken place on earth Mm -hmm. they've all <laughs> taken place they've all taken place within a realm that we as terrestrial beings can get to we've been to the moon we can go to low earth orbit mm -hmm. okay all of these encounters have taken place and then i said well and they've been reported these encounters have been reported since time immemorial and what i said to this person is these encounters have happened saints have had these encounters like there's two thousand years of a tradition of these encounters and these things saying what they were mm -hmm. and other entities saying well this is what's going on two mm -hmm. individuals it's like you have nothing like you the person who's like oh that's all like oversimplified and everything i'm like there's there's a mountain of writing first-hand experiences of individuals a mountain of writing and an understanding of the hierarchy of these things mm -hmm. how this all came to be mm -hmm. And you say they're from outer space and you have zero evidence of that. And, wow. and by them telling you that they're from outer space, look at the first thing that you do is you discount the Christian tradition, yeah, which is you, exactly why, what a demon would yeah, want you to do. Yeah, it's like, it's so evident because it's the first thing, me thinks you protest too much. It's yeah. like the first thing, the first thing you go for. I just have to say something really quick. Maybe we've been to the moon. That's for someone special out there that listens. Right. Maybe. 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 We okay. But, but we didn't, there's no stories of encountering anything on the, any life forms on the moon from those people who maybe went to the moon. Everything that's happened has happened here. Right. Or, or in like the sky. Well, well we can be in the sky. Right. 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 Hey, where do the demons hang out a lot at, Father? In the air. Yeah. 
The prince of the power <laughs> of the air. The prince of the power of the air, man. The prince of the power of the air. There's so many people rolling their eyes at that. <laughs> well, not not for Marvin, obviously, but for people who would hear it, they'd be like, okay. It's like whatever St. Paul was just using a term. It's like, okay, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Did we, it, it's funny because I was thinking about, um, I, I'm trying, I don't want to be that old man who's repeating his stories, you know, did it, did it tell you guys about, I got permission from him to speak about it, but there's a gentleman who, yeah, we, I, I did, I think I did talk about the gentleman who, who encountered these beings, these light beings, and they, they were wheels within wheels. Did we talk about that? I don't think so. Like Ezekiel? Like this would stick out. This is Ezekiel, right? Well, yes, but um, I got his we permission. We did not talk about this. We did not talk about this. So okay, I, please, got his, I got his permission. So, so kudos to you, my friend. And the other thing is to, uh, if I did mention this in the past episode, I apologize, everybody, but it's pertinent, right? So there's a gentleman who had recently, um, he's, you know him, Cyprian, right? I, I, I encountered him because of you, right? Who had recently, you know, had this kind of like awakening, you know, encounter and uh, Damascus Road type of thing. And kind of getting a long story short, he was speaking about these beings of light that he encountered. And he was saying that when they appeared to him this one time, he was sober, they appeared to him and they were like, I think he said there's three of them, maybe two or three of them. He said, they're just like these silhouettes of like light. They said within them were like wheels, within wheels turning, right? And he says, the thing that was crazy is like, they were telling me to kill myself. Not, not audibly, it's just like they're communicating psychically to me to kill myself. And he was just telling me about, you know, just how, terrifying to some degree this this encounter was but also in, you know kind of interesting all you know all the all the emotions coming through and as soon as he said that i was like oh, i know what that you know what i mean yeah so he, he goes through it i'm like well do you want to know what that was he's like oh absolutely and i had to stop unfortunately as i often do and i had to go the long way around <laughs> i couldn't just tell him directly what it was but i had to tell him about in our tradition um, we have various traditions of uh, iconographic depiction of certain angels because there's rank of angels and one of them are the thrones and we depict thrones as a wheel within a wheel and as soon as he said that I was like ah right so I was telling him about this and I said so this is a rank of angel and you have to understand that when the angels fell they fell from all the ranks mm -hmm. The, the seraphim, archangels, thrones. So there's, so there's seraphim and cherubim who are fallen as well? Correct. Oh, wow. Correct. All the, all, all the ranks fell. All the, like, there's, right? And so this wheel within the wheel, right? I already know what that is, you know? Two things before, well, one thing before I move on forward. This is another thing which... It's it's hard for people to understand it and getting back to the thing with iconography. Be careful because there's a lot of people who they will tell you, they will try to dismiss some of the um kind of real life factual accounts that the the icon that the iconography reveals, right? It's not all just abstract symbolism, right? Like some of it comes from a lot of a lot of what you see in iconography comes from revelation it's all revelation right it's all been revealed but some of it is even things that have been um witnessed by people like this these like there's certain iconographic features there's you can even take pictures of certain holy like holy elders now and you can put them up sometimes and you see the way that the kind of they have these what, I, what my professor called theotic features theotic features right the way that the human face the human body begins to change as it progresses in, in deification right it, it really begins to look takes on these iconographic theotic features anyways so 
I told him, I said, like, yeah, this is the tradition of depicting these types of angels as wheels within wheels, right? Talked about Ezekiel and all that stuff. But I said, yeah, you know what those were? It's like, those are demons. And he's just like, what? I'm like, yeah, they're demons. And so started going through this whole process, started talking about, and I brought up the first, one of the first and most important things I brought up was the Gadarenes. And when Christ expelled the demoniac, what happened, right? The spear the went pigs. to the pigs, and what did the pigs do? Jump off a cliff. They killed themselves. <laughs> Suicide. Suicide. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. You see? Oh, yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the, demon, the demons' suicide is what the demons are after. They, yeah. Because, see, what people don't... Some will say, well, why would they want that? Don't they want to incarnate in the body? It's like, no, no, no. They feed off of the... They're vampiric in, in that sense. They feed off the demonic, excuse me, the demonic feeds off of that energy and it's in the blood. I mean, that's why they're the inspires of war to such the degree that it is like, look, no one's going to tell me that the wars of the 20th century were anything but demonically inspired. That's what, oh my gosh. Like, they, no, like no one's going to tell World me. World War One and tell me it's not demonic. It's demonically inspired. Listen, listen, um, I was talking with uh, uh, someone I was, I'm in a cohort with, right? And this this gentleman, um, great guy, this gentleman, um, him and I were were kind of swapping stories about the Balkans, right? His are way better than mine, obviously, because for obvious reasons. But we're stopping swapping stories about the Balkans, and he's telling me about because he was there seeing action. You know what I mean? Like, and he's telling me about. He went through a village and I mean, it was even hor horrifying having him tell me the story because he was like, look, you know, I went through this village and he's just like, yeah, like this village, these people were neighbors and they loved, you know, they were neighbors, right? Intermarried, all that stuff. And he's like, long story short, this village, they literally, you know, one ethnic group slaughtered the other they were neighbors like intermarried neighbors and when i when he's like he's like when i say slaughtered i mean like body parts on on pikes right and he's like i can't remember how, how exactly he phrased it but essentially he was saying like that made me a believer of the devil walking the earth He's like, I, like, that was what I saw. That was, that was not just the human kind of like response of like war. It, it was a whole nother level. Right. And I'm like, yeah, man. Well, you it's know? like that. It's like that. I think I already referenced it, but it's like that part in Daredevil where in that first season of that show, man, I talk a lot about this show on this podcast, but whatever. But there's like that part where Matt Murdock is talking to the priest and he's like, is the devil real? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the devil's like, you know, blah, 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 Hebrew term for adversary, you know, it's just like, and then Matt's like, okay, so he's not, he's like, let me finish. And then he tells that story where he saw like the devil in like whatever war torn country he was in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, take this on for what it is, but I've heard it from one source and it's a less than credible source. So take it for what it is. But, and I guess this has to do with the question I was going to ask at the end, but I'm going to spoil it anyway. But I'm really, really interested in World War One, and I think a lot of people who spend time with me knows that I can go on and on about it. So I'll try and keep it short. But the Sir Douglas Haig, who organized um, the Psalm, which uh, the Battle of the Psalm, which is like depending on your perspective, there's really no way to at the end of the day to really look at it as anything other than like probably the biggest military defeat a British def like defeat at the time, probably still, maybe even to this day, I'm not sure. And I've heard other narratives about it, but that it was actually a victory, blah, blah, blah. But the embarrassing fact is at the end of the day, the Germans were stopped killing British people at a certain point because they're like, they were slaughtering British people in such droves that at the end of the day, that Germans kind of felt bad for them. So like, you guys can, you guys can leave, just run back, don't shoot them. And, um, Sir Douglas Haig was in communion with devils because he would do um, seances and summon the spirits of like Napoleon, 
and like uh, Alexander the Great and stuff like that to discuss strategy with them. And this is the guy that then went in to go lead this battle who organized, didn't lead anything, stood very safely back and organized this entire endeavor, which cost like, I don't remember. So don't hold this 60,000 casualties in one afternoon. Like, wow. and that's like, I've, I've always pictured like, there's like the fits of roiling laughter that were coming from like those fields. I mean, talk about like a vibrational energy being manifest in earth. Like, I mean, look at the Western front, like still parts of that cannot be even gone to today because like one, there's live shells still there. There's chemicals like, so like the amount of like gas warfare that went on so spoiled the land that like people to this day, like there's ground up bits of corpses and everything just uh -huh. like mashed into the ground. And I mean, this last thing I'll say, but like the amount of like to that energy of what Father Turbo was talking about, like neighbor and neighbor slaughtering each other in the Balkans and like World War One, it's now most people know about it, but the Christmas truce oh, yeah. of 1914. Um, and the next day, right back at it like right back at it like there's stories of trenches flooding and both sides standing outside and looking at each other like 100 yards away and be like uh and then like what are you gonna do and then they like all break rank and go like hang out with each other like smoke cigarettes and like do whatever and then once everything's back to normal they're back to just doing it all over again and like even armistice day november 11th at 11 a.m people firing their guns at 1059 and then at 11 strikes everyone stops like mm. that like talk about like a certain like like mode of creation being brought into this world like so so physically so it's meth it's methodical it's it's a methodical meat grinder like you you look at those stories and you just see like oh oh the purpose here is just to kill human beings that's what so that, that's the that's is. the purpose that's, that's one of the biggest battles of World War I was it, it eventually turned into a, a war of attrition um, that we had to bleed the other country white. Well, that right there, to... the blood, the blood, the blood. See, that's the thing. It's yeah. The life is in the blood. And, they, and the blood, ener the energy from the blood from that type of death and carnage. See, this is the thing that they're really after. And so this is important because, you know, I'm gonna pull out my knuckle dragging reference, right? <laughs> War pigs. War pigs is such an incredible, accurate description oh of, of what's really happening, right? Like War pigs will tell you more about what's really happening than any textbook you'll get in college or high school. Mm -hmm. like that's that's the reality, right? And so, what's interesting to me about all of this is that when you begin to understand the, the spoiling of the land, like you said, I mean, this reality, right? Look, if you put a porn store, I don't care what you say, if you put a porn shop in a neighborhood, right? What's gonna happen? Okay, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Six months, you're gonna have an increase of prostitution. One year, you could have an increase of drugs and violence, right? Two years, you're gonna have an increase of molestations, domestic violence, right? It, it will just spread, right? Because sin isn't about just these bad moral choices. It affects the area, it affects areas, right? That's why houses have to be blessed. That's why all this stuff happens, right? But that's the inverse see that's the it's so spoiled now and we've been so conditioned that we think that's the reality but that's actually the inverse of the reality the reality is that where god is worshiped properly when god where god is worshiped with faith and love and fear the space changes mm -hmm. that's the reality the inverse of that is the demonic infecting and defiling but that pure that purifying illuminating reality of god's presence that's that's what the target was because that's the reality because if you can cut that off then it, then it's done then it's done but and the reason for it is because it's real
because it's it's not the worship of any god, right? I used to talk about this with um, Rodney Knott. You know, I'd be like, "Look, man, you like you come into the neighborhood, right, where the parish is at. You come into all the neighborhoods around it. And you find churches on all the corners. Yeah, right? nothing's changed. <laughs> Sometimes it's even worse, mm -hmm. right? So it's not about churches." It's not about just any church, right? It's about the worship of the true and living God, right? Because the worship of the true and living God reveals regenerative power. It, it, it facilitates not just the simple, you know, facilitation of moral, good moral choices. It, it, it's regenerative to people. That's real. But you can't even, can you even have sustained good moral choices without the ineffable regenerative power actually happening? Can't happen. Yeah, it, it would, it would, because the, the, God, the momentum. The God, yeah. Without the true God, you and I are just, I mean, without the true God, that's where you get Bishop Kentucky Fried doing whatever he's doing. Yeah and making sure. the situation worse, right? Making the situation worse, right? Because where God is truly worshiped, guess what? Those people who are worshiping fear him. That's what the people don't want to talk about either, right? Because the programming has gone so far the other way where it's like, no, 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 no. God's become like my snuggly buddy. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> no, that's, do you guys remember, uh, and it came out a couple of years ago. I think I need to bring it back into the catechism class because it's, it's such a profound theology. It was an onion spot. Remember the onion, right? Yeah. It was an onion spot on this guy. He does an interview on, uh, today we're going to be interviewing, you know, <laughs> God Almighty. Have you seen this one? Okay. Listen, guys, we can do it. We're Americans, right? We're free. Sabrina, can you just jump on there <laughs> real quick? And can you? It'll be the onion, the interviewing almighty God. It'll be so worth everybody. Uh, just, uh, you only live once. You know I mean? I'm down. Did you ever read a shot of coffee with Jesus? Onion interview with God. Is it the... ONN exclusive one on one interview yeah, yeah, with yeah, God. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you share that with everybody? This, yeah, it's only one minute long. That's how that's it's short. That's how right? good it is. It's okay. it's 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 okay. high theology. Okay, let's uh let's get it cracking. Hold on. Speaking of the fear of God, right? This is here we go. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> onion. Here we go. Tonight, something truly extraordinary. I've been afforded the divine privilege to sit down with, in an exclusive interview, our celestial creator, God. God, thank you for joining <laughs> That is absolutely incredible. That's incredible. incredible. It's incredible. That's incredible. I've never seen that before. It's that incredible. is absolutely brilliant and incredible. My so, gosh, like that's my me, whole tomorrow. To me, that's, that's higher theology than most cats are getting in quote unquote seminary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That right it. there, if you want to get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Wow, that's so good. That's so, that's the rest of my week. It's so, man. It's so good.
It's so wow. Profound. And it was so, done so well too. Profound. It's profound. It's profound. So I think there's enough, there's been a lot of good themes tonight because there's this theme of finding truth, not where you think it is, right? You can find it in an onion uh, mm-hmm. uh, short. You can find it in a Black Sabbath song. In right? The Simpsons. You, you Seems can, to you, be a lot in The Simpsons. You know what I mean? Simpsons. You can find it in, uh, you can find it in, you know, Orwell, right? There's, there's these mm-hmm. places where if you look, more importantly, it's not where people think it is. It's the, the cathedral is, uh, you know, uh, it's it's not where it's not where people think it is. You know, this is one of those things where getting to this understanding of the true God, true God. It's like, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we're coming up on it, but not really because I just want to talk about this really quick. Uh, we talked last week about at least shouting out some a little bit of like guidelines for people who are really wanting to explore orthodoxy but they got like a greek like a greek church or something that's just crazy about the covid stuff and whether or not this is a thing that they should pursue even if they're that's like their only option but like they have to mask up or maybe they even god forbid there's some kind of vaccine mandate or something in order to you have to get in order to get eucharist you have to show your vaccine card or something like that like i don't know so I'd be remiss because if we said last week we'd address it. So I feel like it's a really good question. So go. So um, you'll forgive me. Um, I can't think which father is a contemporary elder who said it. Um, but he says, you know, in the time of the antichrist, not that I'm saying the antichrist, but I'm just saying, he said that in the time of the antichrist, there'll be plenty of churches. So um, you're just not gonna wanna go there. Mm. And so uh, again, I'm not saying that, you know, in the reign of the antichrist, but um, it's definitely a situation in which when you look at how true believers reacted during the time of surgeonism and all that stuff. And they would, they just opted to gather together and have, you know, real liturgies. They, they opted not to go, you know, and that's. Hey father, what's surgeonism? So this is, this is, this is a, a kind of tough subject in a sense, because there is a measure of nuance, but essentially surgeonism is, named after Patriarch Sergius, who was a, um, during the time of the Bolshevik revolution and when the church was forced to make, um, quote unquote, forced to make quote unquote capitulations to the atheistic regime. Patriarch Sergius was the one who facilitated these quote unquote uh, compromises. Um, and, I, there's arguments that's saying like, well, if it wasn't for Sergius, you know, this and this and that. And, and now's not, I don't really want to get into the whole, like, you know, learning to be quiet versus learning to be, you know, obstinate, whatever. Point being is Sergianism in this term is associated with, you know, capitulation to worldly, not just state, but ultimately demonic powers, you know, for the sake, basically the church, you know, saving its life but really losing it mm-hmm. is essentially what what surgeonism is you know at least those of us who are opposed to it i'm one of them would i'd rather <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd rather my people worship god in truth and in spirit than than play games you know so here's the thing if you're truly at a place where um and, and again it's going to depend, but I think there are certain things that are particularly egregious. You know, I, I would say any place that is even telling you you need to show some sort of passport, you know, don't go a hundred, don't go a hundred yards within that place. Stay far away from it. Right? It's not. You'll you'll do better praying on your knees, repenting, and seeking out you know, good faithful Christians or priests who will encourage you in the in the worship of and the love of Jesus Christ in his church than 
playing these demon games, these, these, these devil's games. So, so I would say you're better off, you're better off with the Psalter, with the gospels and with reading, you know, some St. Paisios mm. and just trying to live a simple, clean life, right? Then, than doing that. And I'll, I'll give you one real simple reason why. If for nothing else, you're going to be put into a trap. On the one hand, if you attend a church like that, you'll be so tempted to judge. Mm. You won't even have a moment of peace of prayer, right? On the other hand, if you're not tempted to judge, you'll be tempted to capitulate and to, be, and to begin eventually, <coughs> excuse me, to participate in that demonic farce. So you're better off, like I said, get a copy of the Psalter, pray the Psalter, get a copy of St. Paisios, read some St. Paisios, read the Gospels, and find someone who's going to encourage you. You're, you're better off like that. If that's truly your, own, your only option. We should have like a place, a, a list of places for people to move to. Like priests, you know, Father, that like aren't on board with oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Reach out. Reach you out. Always reach out and we'll see what we can do. Or Father will see what he can do. I probably won't do anything. Well, I'm not have to go in hiding because now they're going <laughs> to. Well, yeah, I, can we I, edit I, that out? <laughs> I, I, like, will, I will say, as someone who's thousands of miles away from the nearest Orthodox parish. Oh, dang. Yeah, Cyprian. Sorry. You're I, qualified to talk about this. I, I will say, just from my own personal point of view, and one of the reasons why I am Orthodox now is that if it is in your heart and if you pray, the Lord is going to bring you exactly what you need. Like the Lord brought the Eucharist and priests, oh, <laughs> priests plural priests, yeah. to this place. Yeah. So... And to and to the Orthodox faithful here, who are he, who are here? Yeah. And there so, like that. Oh, I'm sorry. No. And so, what I'm saying is exactly what exactly what Father said is that it's like it'll it'll he'll he'll bring it to you. you yeah. There's I, no question. Yeah, I can't I can't say this I can't say this enough because I know that there's some people, and God willing, there's going to be more people who aren't Orthodox who listen to all this. You know, forgive me for this kind of PSA moment, but listen, I'm, I'm down to talk to anybody. That's, I feel free to contact me. I mean, um, if I can encourage you in any way, I will. Um, because I know that now, especially God, those who seek God truly, even if you don't know everything, even if you're not sure about everything, if you are honest in your desire to know God and to know truth, I guarantee you, I bet everything that God will make. I, I know God will make a way. I, don't, I, I know he'll make a way. I've seen it too many times. I've seen it in my own life. I should not be orthodox. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me get riled up real quick. There is this line of thought that people have. There's a very famous um, YouTube video that goes around um, uh, with a young man who's really well-meaning, he's very soft-spoken, and he has a way of, in of interviewing lots of well-known Orthodox people and Catholic people, whatever. Great young man, you know what I mean? He, he, his channel is all about trying to bring simplicity, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I heard him say something when he was like, well, this is why I'm not Orthodox, blah, 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 and I just shook my head because I'm like, you don't get it, right? Hmm because he was making his argument, I've heard this before about, well, there's something disingenuous about me converting. Because as a Westerner, you know, historically, I wouldn't have had the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna tell you something right now. Any of you who doubt, I should not be Orthodox, let alone a priest. And everybody knows it, right? So if I'm Orthodox, I'm a priest, right? There's no excuse for anyone, right? Period. I mean, there's that there's that story of that man. Cyprian, I was, let me just is, Cyprian is Orthodox. Like on an island. 
where I was baptized on this island. He was baptized <laughs> on that on that island. I I don't want to go ad nauseum. I I'm just telling you, like, if if you everyone do yourselves a favor and start reading the prologue of Okra. I think I've said that before, but it's okay. I'll say it a million times again. If you start reading the prologue of Okra by Saint Nikolai Vavrovich, let me let me step back. Get yourself the prologue, get yourself yeah. the Psalter, get yourself the Gospels, get yourself still some uh, St. Paisios, you're good, right? You start doing that and you start praying from your heart for God to make a way, believe me, believe me, he will make a way, right? Because he's the true God. And the only thing that stands in his way between you and him is your unbelief. Full stop. Stuff. there's that uh beautiful yeah there's that uh story of i i can forget what it is it's been a little while but there's like some greek village or something like that that didn't have a priest for a while and they're begging a bishop and then this priest showed up and did a bunch of stuff married a bunch of people uh did funeral rites over graves like baptized a bunch of babies blah 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 over the course of like a couple of weeks and then he took off and then they like talk to the bishop and they're like oh thank you for sending out that priest he's like i never sent out a priest and then they looked he's like what's his name it's like oh it's nectarios mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. oh father nectarios like saint nectarios gotcha mm -hmm. so a saint mm -hmm. came from heaven just to come down and do a bunch of stuff and then take off just like because god's like yeah we can do that like well there are the many stories in the lives of again to, to reading the prologue i'm shocked at how many stories there are of the monks when somebody shows up to see this monk they travel this hermit monk they say well how are you getting eucharist they say oh an angel shows up yeah. every sunday or a, a, a young boy comes yeah. uh, who's uh, from from heaven and he gives and multiple people will be like oh yeah 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 no he was here yeah. i was here with him when this person came and gave us the eucharist and they're like what and it's just over and over and over or like not Everybody, only that. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. When you hear that, or someone rolls her eyes at that, run from that person. They'll infect you. Man. Don't let anybody infect you with this materialistic, humanistic, demonic, rationalist poppycock. Right? They will that that cuts you off from the from the grace that is transfiguring. It cha I'm this. The three of us right now are all experiencing it and the fruits of it to some degree, right? Like it's it's real. And as you grow in it, you're able to discern these things. You're able to accept these things, not just out of a hope, but because they're real. They're real and your eyes begin to open up to these things, you know, but we have to be very careful because again, people will it's not even about like i said earlier it's not even about the atheists like that's child's play it's the guy who's playing the sophisto games that's the guy you got to watch out for it's the guy who wants to well actually it's like kick that guy out of your car kick him off <laughs> like just don't don't bother with that fool right because in their heart they're saying there is no god they'll have a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof. And that's what we're dealing with now, this denying of the true power of the true God. I mean, as we're sitting here, uh, I have signal on and somebody linked a picture of a banner hung from some Methodist church or whatever that says like, the blood of Christ will not stop COVID from infecting you or something like Lord that. Lord have mercy. Hold on, I got the actual. Lord have mercy. What's well, like that thing I sent you earlier? The Cyprian. blood of Jesus will not save you from COVID. That's what it says. So you're on mute. I mean, at least they're being honest, right? At least they're being Cyprian, honest. You're, muted. you're you're muted, Cyprian. Oh, I'm muted. I don't have I don't have it on. Do you want me to show that, Father? It's so. Just read it okay yeah it's, it's a, terrible it's, it's from twitter it's from twitter it's from and it's twitter. somebody it's like two days ago 
I want to see videos of anti-vax parents being painfully restrained, yeah. the look of absolute horror in their eyes, tears running down their cheeks as their children are forcibly, capitalized all words forcibly, vaccinated against the will of their racist, Trumpist, anti-vax, they had to throw in transphobic parents. Yeah. I want them all to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is interesting. That's that my point right there. They're, yeah. So the last sentence is, I want them all to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're powerless in the face of the vaccine. That's, that's my point of the, of the tweet. All the stuff is whatever. That last point right there, that they are powerless in the face of the vaccine. This of is- the, the, the vaccine as a, they're, as they're a referencing a, a as power. A it's a power, it's right? A power. Of powers and principalities. They're talking about a power. The vaccine saves. Remember the Christ of De Janeiro. Vaccine saves. It's a power. The vaccine is yep. a, is a it's yep. a, a demonic god. Yeah, yeah. And we and and look what last year. I mean, we talked about this before. <laughs> I, I don't know. Now's the time to outline the whole. I mean, maybe it's time, but you know the uh, the advent. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. of the vaccine coming at the time of nativity yeah but isn't there pun intended i mean there's absolutely pun intended that's <laughs> the point right yeah. is that it came at the time of i mean and it's well and the boosters now too because we're in it right now right and I mean, we're in the, we're in the fast right now that's the whole thing is this like i i don't want to get too and i'm sure that father's going to validate this or maybe you won't i don't know but it seems like it comes in waves and like just this morning, I felt like the crash of like another wave, wave hit me. There's like yep. five things in the headlines about yep. what uh, Omicron. Omicron. Uh, Omicron. Yeah, because Omicron per CIA. But like I, I saw that and I was like, and it just kept happening. Where it was like every time I'd open my phone, father sent that tweet or shared that tweet or whatever. And all this stuff kept happening. And it was like, it totally comes in waves and it's totally strategic. And like, it always happens around like some form of liturgical cycle because like, um, I'm sure father can go, but the kneeling, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the trajectory starting at I mean, it was declared a pandemic at the start of Great Lent, 2020. Mm. Like our Great Lent, mm. like the, the Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox Church's Great Lent. That's when it started, right? Everyone met at, I mean, there's a common practice, at least here in the States of quote unquote, you know, pan-Orthodox Vespers, where all the jurisdictions get together and they have Vespers at one parish, whatever. So Sunday of Orthodoxy, the first Sunday of Great Lent, we commemorate the triumph of Orthodoxy, which is the triumph of, of the icons over the iconoclast, since speaking of icons earlier. And that was the last normal Sunday because by that following week, many, if not most parishes were like, well, okay, let's not meet because we don't know what's happening. They're talking about, you know, it was starting to get wild. It was declared a pandemic. That was like, okay, cut the planes, all that stuff, right? So the lockdowns begin to happen from there. And during the time of Holy Week, we were in lockdowns. And if everyone remembers, Pascha means Passover. And so for the first time since the time of Moses, people were actually huddling in their homes cowering over this quote-unquote angel of death hoping that it would pass them over mm -hmm. but there's another interesting piece there and that is there's the portion of the the paschal liturgy where the procession of the people is is this is before midnight and the procession of the people are there and they're outside the church doors and then the priest will take a cross and will bang on the doors and there is this back and forth between the priest and someone else who will be representing death open up all you ancient gates and be lifted up right and 
this portion, a little shout out to another, you know, quote unquote podcast, people may know this, you know, or may not know it, but that portion is a throwing in the face of Satan, his own words, if you will. It's like Christ talking crap, right? Christ giving the smack talk back to the devil, right? Gets into the whole bail cycle and all that stuff, right? But that did not happen in 2020. And in, in a lot, the exception were the few small places that maybe did do it. But for most places, that did not happen for the first time in, in memoriam, right? Around the world, by the way. Not one pocket isolated place around the world at once. This proclamation against the devil, the glory and the triumph of Christ and, and his resurrection did not happen in this public. Because remember, the liturgy just in general is a war cry. It's a proclamation against the powers, just in general, right? Which is why it's being attacked, which Pascha being the high liturgy, and this didn't happen. So the advent, the, well, the, the, the beginning of all of this began there, but then we move forward, right? Dies down, there's a little bit of a lull, and the next great feast is Ascension, right? And Ascension, a little bit of a lull, there's a little bit of reprieve, people started kind of scratching their heads, at least those of us who were willing to scratch their heads were like, what's going on here, right? Well, the next big feast from there, is when the next big movement hit. And that is Pentecost. And five days before Pentecost was the George Floyd incident, okay? Now, if you remember, what's the symbol? What was one of the great symbols for George Floyd? What was take big, a knee. Take, take a knee. knee. Take kneel. a knee. Kneel. So for those of you who aren't familiar, at Pentecost, right, we have what's called Pentecost Vespers, the kneeling Vespers, <laughs> which after the liturgy on Pentecost day, we will all kneel because we haven't knelt in church because of the coming of the Holy Spirit waiting, well, excuse me, because of Christ's resurrection, we haven't knelt. And now the Holy Spirit comes and we now kneel for the first time in 50 days. And if you notice here, this parallel, right? George Floyd and the onslaught of, you know, the BLM onslaught that that quote unquote inspired around the world. Why are they having BLM marches in Netherlands of all places? Very weird. Very so weird. weird, right? So quickly organized, so quickly, you know, kind of executed. So the kneeling with George Floyd, right? And the world trying to quote unquote deal with what quote unquote racial justice, right? Well, the thing that's interesting is not only do you have the kneeling as a, you know, as a kind of anti-symbol in the place of, for the world here, you have the kneeling at, of the liturgical cycle for the church. But the thing is Pentecost is the way that Christ and the church actually specifically addresses quote unquote racial division. Because in the Traparian for Pentecost, it talks about how God divided the nations through, through uh, the confusion of tongues, right? The Tower of Babel, but through the descending of the tons of fire, God unites all men in the life of the church, right? So the life of the church is the way that Christ deals with racism, with tribalism, with cultural issues, right? Man fundamentally is, is separated from himself from the fall, right? Which includes nations and tribes and all this stuff. Well, in the church, what's presented is the meta culture. The church is the culture that is above all cultures, right? So no matter where you're from, whether you're poor and uneducated, black, white, brown, whatever, whether you're educated, sophisticated, and wealthy, black, brown, white, whatever, male, female, that culture of the church is the culture in which your particular ethnic and historical culture is not only simply redeemed, but it's brought to its fullness. That metaculture, that's what the church is, right? And so that metaculture is the way that all people find that perfect balance with each other because the uniqueness of your ethnicity and your history isn't done away with. It isn't this homogenization, right? 
because that's the thing. We're not Hindus in the sense of, you know, in Hinduism, everyone gets gets kind of like brought into the Brahma and you just kind of, you melt away. No, 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 no. Cyprian becomes the true Cyprian. I become the true, like you become your true self in the light of Christ. That's what, that's what the process of salvation does. The true God makes you the true human, makes you the true person who are uniquely created to be, right? That happens in the, in the culture of the church. And so the world had its offering, had its anti-Pentecost, if you will, five days before ours. There's, that's not a coincidence, but it moves on forward because then the next big feast, you start dealing with nativity, you start dealing with Christmas. And what is that all about? What's the theological center point of the nativity? Incarnation. Right Incarnation. And so the world, the powers, they give us the anti-incarnation, the new mRNA, the new DNA, the new savior, which has come to save us, which is the vaccine, right? I'll never forget seeing a tweet or a, a, a post from someone. I, I'm so thankful I get to have the vaccine for Christmas. Like that, that why would anyone, I mean, the vaccine doesn't save you, the Lord Jesus Christ, his incarnation, you're going to die. Everyone who's getting their fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth booster shot, you're still going to die. If you Maybe never, sooner. If, Maybe sooner. If, sooner, unfortunately, right? If you never get COVID, guess what? You're still going to die. Right? The reality of Christ coming into the world and becoming flesh and making a means for you to participate in his life, that's your savior. That's, that's the only thing that is truly powerful, right? But this antichrist, this vaccine, this antichrist has come into place and said, no. And so people are like, yes, the, the power of the vaccine, right? It came at the time of the incarnation. It eclipsed the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, his nativity. It eclipsed it for Christians. So this, so this is the thing, right? Even the elect would be deceived. Strong delusion. I'm not saying when, I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll go on record saying this isn't right. This is, this is not right. It's not of God. And anyone who tells you it is, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm staking everything on it. They're wrong. This is not of God. And, and somewhere in there, and somewhere in all that crazy th craziness that you're talking about, uh, if you had an apple, suddenly out of nowhere, a, a universal translator was like downloaded onto your phone without your consent. So I'm just saying like somewhere in the middle of all of that, like the language barrier was undone. Mm -hmm. And like, um, uh, I remember when that happened, I was like just learning truly about what the Tower of Babel actually was. And like, uh, then lo and behold, this thing without my consent was downloaded onto my phone. So, yep, yep, it's it's getting it's real. It's it's getting it's getting pretty real. And the biggest thing is again the true God and knowing and understanding and recognizing where who that is and understanding that He's the one that has the the power. This. That's why I felt that tweet was really important because that portion right there is like, they're powerless in the face of the vaccine. That is such a revealed, that's an apocalyptic statement right there. Mm -hmm. That's a revealed statement. That's the, that's the revelation of what's really going on behind all of this. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Well, for maybe as a, as a good one, uh, speaking of Tower of Babel, and since I, since I've, uh, I'm managing our, uh, our screen share here have you guys have you guys seen the uh the drawings of amazon's new headquarters <laughs> oh no oh, this, boy. Is this is like one of those um one of those i i I've, i started watching those videos forgive me everybody you know those ones where they have like the first time reactions like they'll take oh, a this is, boy, this is, they'll, this play is a like reaction video. Song, they'll get their first reaction it's like... this is a reaction video i'm ready for this one so here we go amazon's next headquarters
Whoa. It's the Tower of Babel. It's exactly the Tower as, of Babel. Exactly as depicted in like the wood, old wood cuttings and everything like that. It's exactly Whoa. the t- Even with the gardens on it and everything. That's insane. Arlington, Arlington Virginia. Wow. This is this. Wow. And mind you, Arlington, Virginia. So in the background there, that's Washington, D.C. Oh, Arlington, Virginia is where the CIA is. It's it's where it's where the airport is. It's I mean, I mean that's Arl- a modern day ziggurat. That's what it is. That's what I was wondering because I always I don't I know very, very little about this, but I thought it was a ziggurat. And then I was um well let me see if I can pull up t- let me see if I can pull up old Tower of Babel. Tower of Look, but look, no, yeah, right look. There. Yeah. I mean, look. Oh, yeah. Okay. That is wild, man. It's exactly the Tower of Babel. Like, is- as as depicted. Look, here. This is a perfect look. Yeah. Look. No, you're absolutely oh, right. Yeah, with, the, with everything, oh. with the gardens on the side and everything. And then here it is. Look. Wow. They literally built the Tower of Babel. <laughs> Oh man, that's going to be their headquarters of Amazon. Mercy, Arlington, Virginia, huh? Or in Arlington, Virginia, right Arlington. next. I mean, it, you can see Washington D.C. Unreal. I mean, I guess we all knew that America was going to be playing a big part in the Armageddon, right? Yeah. Well, it's so, where I the mean, Pen- I- it's where the Pentagon is. So you're going to have the Pentagon, and you're going to have the Tower of Babel. Hmm. Well, I'm not sleeping tonight. I can tell you that much. I'm pretty. I'm pretty wigged out. February second, twenty twenty one. This was announced. It opens? That's when it announced. It was announced. Oh man. So wife. here's what's funny: is they said it also must be said it bears a distinct resemblance to the swirling poop emoji, though with some healthier colors mixed in. Not it bears a resemblance to an exact resemblance to the Tower Talk of about Babel as the picture. information because now people are only going to think about the poop emoji when they see it. They're yeah, not going to think about. Here you go. This is this is what it'll look like at a distance. That's the other theme, right? These things being couched. That's they're it. One hundred percent. Just like no, nah, that's not the thing. Nah. Oh, that's oh. not it. It looks exactly like a depiction of. If somebody was like, "Hey, make us a modern." skyscraper but make it the tower of babel how else would you do it how else would you do it it would look like that exactly like that how else would you do it it's crazy it's crazy yeah incredible so incredible we're coming up on it yep um so i was gonna do a food question but um i kind of don't think uh, today is the beginning of our nativity fast so i don't want to start talking about pizza and taco bell and stuff because don't do it um but I, earlier today i was thinking about it and i i've been thinking about them on the fly the last couple of weeks and i was like i'm gonna actually try and do something one that's not based off comic books or star wars huh. um and two might actually be interesting but maybe there's nothing to this and i already kind of divulged my answer but what's like what's like a specific time in i guess maybe even recent history that you guys just kind of nerd out about like I think a lot of people have like specific times in history that really like call out to them and mine have kind of jumped all over, but I ended up kind of um, early 1900s Balkans, uh, but more specifically World War One, because I, I don't want to go on and on, but there's a lot of spirituality to that war and there's a lot that can be said about the war. This is the last thing I'll say about it. Aside from all the other stuff that I said earlier, you will never have another four years like that ever again probably not no, because even world war ii that aesthetic kind of carried over like the u.s military all that kind of stuff kind of it carried over there was like but world war one was almost kind of at the time seen as like an embarrassment like a whole bunch of people would be like well that escalated quickly like i have no idea how that happened but it's not going to happen again mm-hmm. um so there's a lot of people who say and i agree to the degree that I can as a largely uninformed person that World War One was the death of the old world. The mm-hmm. new world came out of the other side. That's the vaginal canal, if you will. 
of like this thing having to come through and be incarnate in like another those four years is like all of history pyramids into those four years and comes out the other side prove me wrong that's all i'm saying is prove me wrong because nothing has shaped no no war since then has shaped us in the way that that one has you can make the argument that world war ii did and there's even arguments now that it's actually just one long war rather than two separate right. world wars right um but world war one you'll never see the imagery used again of creepy unearthly gas masks oh yeah like crawling across mud with like sheet music and like refined china ground into the right into the ground and like them having to like oh i, I don't know like rip down church bells to melt down the the uh the metal to make munitions and stuff like that like it's like you don't see that on the world scale that you did at the time. And the fact that everybody knew what was happening and everybody was powerless to stop it. I don't here's know. The, here's the thing I just want to say this real quick because it's super important. But one of the biggest problems in regards of uh, the, the scary word for everyone with eschatological perspectives on things, which a lot of people miss is, um, you know, Father Sarah from Rose, it's later than you think, right? Mm. And one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets on it's later than people think, right? Um, is because of when you understand what you're talking about here with World War One and what occurred there, that those moments, like people think of quote unquote end times, number one, because of all the bad doctrine, people don't want to touch it because they want to look unsophisticated. Right, which mm. that's its own type of hubris and well played demon, well played. <laughs> um, but that moment in time, you you can look at that and go like, there is a whole nother level of unearthly, like otherworldly demonic manifestation. Yes, that time period. That's the thing that a lot of people don't catch, and they can look at that as like, oh, that's human beings, whatever. Blah blah. It's like, no, no, no. There's a level of horror that it, it, it transcends the kind of like simple animality of, of human beings. Yes. It, it's, it's demonic. This, is, it's this is my That's, fascination. People, people miss out on that. They don't understand how significant that is. This is right? my fascination with that era. And well-spoken, Father, because that's that's the other issue. That's what causes me to not enjoy, but the extreme fascination of like i mean talk about symbolic like sit like symbol a symbolic language that's what i'm trying to say is look at that war i mean uh saint nikolai again coming up tonight uh pointed out in um uh man i'm sorry it's late it's, it's later than i think but it's um i can't remember uh the agony of the church we're talking about the stupidity of Britain and Germany and France all praying to the same God for us to kill each other. And like, I mean, the I, I won't. Sounds just... like Texas high school football. Both, both, <laughs> yeah. both, si both sides uh, praying before and at halftime to the to the same God. But I mean, even the absurd reality, and I swear I'll be quiet after this, but like even the absurd reality behind the assassination itself, not to mention, oh, whew, not to mention Rasputin, like let's not even get into the fall of the like holy Russian empire, like let's not even get into that, like that's a tangent for a whole other well, time. I've said, I've, I've been saying that uh, Fauci and Rasputin are basically the same, same person. Have we ever seen them take in the a, same room take, together? Take a second and think about that. We haven't. Take a second and take a second and think about it. Take a second and think about it. They're the same person. Mm -hmm. They're the same person. But, First off, why does this man have political power? But I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've just, I just no, no, no. There is their point. The problem that throws the the problem that will throw people throw people off the scent of that is will be well, who's Nicholas, and and. And what they don't understand 
is that it was like on the one hand it wasn't about nicholas but it was right because nicholas was russia right but i mean like, also it was about, russia exactly that's yeah what but he think was. also about how hapless he was oh little czar nicholas ii he didn't want to be czar he was forced into it and i mean like if we're thinking of like an adjective to describe the current administration, it would certainly be hapless. It would yep. certainly be like a naive kind of like perhaps reanimated corpse, like of a person who's just like getting prodded forward to say things. And if I might just say really quick, um, the, the assassination itself happening in. Yep. Yeah. And like a Serbian nationalist is yeah. being the one to do it. And the fullness of that story is ridiculous because the assassination was botched and um, they pretty much the driver, like uh, Archduke Ferdinand was like, I want to go check on the people who are hurt from the first assassination attempt. So let's go down this. And then the driver goes down the wrong street on accident and goes to back up. And the car stalls and Gabriel La Princa, the guy who kills him, just happens to be like eating a sandwich at that exact spot. He's like one of the original people who got like upset about the way the assassination went and then left and went to go like catch a bite to eat being all bummed. It would be like uh, whatever hardcore history. I know I'm quoting this a lot right now, but like Dan Carlin says, like literally it's like har um, <sighs> Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald uh, going and trying to shoot JFK and then not working out and then like going to Steak and Shake or whatever. And then JFK like pulls in to Steak and Shake and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to just get him now. And like, so that whole thing happening. And then, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting worked up. The whole like powder keg untwining of like the secret alliances that happened throughout all of Europe. All can I stop you? I'll stop right now because. This is what's important for all of you who think that you're going to elect somebody that you're going to legislate your way out of this that you think oh, we just need to get local government we mm. just need to do this and that all of you who think that you're sadly mistaken forgive but, me i love that like well. I, i'm not trying to i'm not trying to say i'm not trying to give a nihilistic approach like no we can do something we can do something about it but it's not what you think, because I'm not trying to I'm not trying to introduce some sort of fatalism. But what I'm trying to show is history shows us that there are things that are in play that are the world does not necessarily revolve around us. decades, if not centuries of planning had to go into this, had to go into it to the point where you ended up in a conflict where never before heard it's longer of than that. It's longer. The planning's longer than that way long yeah yeah so centuries. millions millions of years Keep going yeah yeah yeah. millions yeah. of so, years of planning yeah. all Everybody, of that we apologize for the host he, he don't he's tired he doesn't know what he's saying right <laughs> so before the beginning of time there began the conspiracy to start world war one yes so, yeah yes. no i'm i yes. I, I yes you're absolutely absolutely correct. absolutely correct so all of this is to bring this cascade of just like Oh, and The Expanse. In the second book, the sci-fi series, The Expanse, he talks about um, a cascade failure of like, it has to be like a system by system by system failure. That's it has to be like one system. What's that? That's what the beast is. So a system leads to a conflict in which never imagined amounts of casualties happened in hours that it would take entire wars to get to never imagined like like unheard of amounts of money spent lives lost like property ruined like and then leading to the second of these conflicts in which the only two times a world ending device potentially world blah 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 ending device is used on another people in wartime like all of that happening and that's why you'll never get those four years again that's but all here's the, but here's the question Here's the question, because I feel like the past two years has been more devastating to the species that I knew as human beings than what. So we could talk about a lot of deaths, right? We could talk about a lot like 
we could talk about nuclear bombs exploding and all of that. But the one thing that didn't happen was like what it was to be human. Like human beings didn't turn into something else overnight. Like, yeah, there was human beings became their, their, their most base vicious selves, but you saw like, oh, okay, this, this is war. This is war that's doing it. But what I see now is I see people changing into something else mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't even need a war to do it. Yeah. It's just that it's gotten more subtle that it's like, well, we're there. The soul of humanity is it, like all of those yeah. things are terrible, soul, but it, the yeah. Soul of humanity. And that's the thing is it didn't even take a war. That's, that's even, that's an even more depressing aspect of it. But I wonder and if it's also like, war. as long as it doesn't look like that, we're still good. As long as we don't. No, end, that's the trick. Yeah. That's it's the so, trick. It's like, that's the theme for tonight, right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as it doesn't, doesn't look, look like, like that. something, it's okay. So then it's like, um, oh, I'm trying to think of, of another. Yeah, as long as we're, I can't think of anything. It's like, as long as we're not chipping people, then we're still okay. And it's like, okay. Oh, no, speaking but, of chipping people, yeah. why don't you show them? Oh, the video. Oh, man. The chip video? Speaking of chipping people. I got to find that one now. Well, well, just, which everyone, I hope everyone. I got to find that. I got to find any, that one. There's no pre-production here. This is. I gotta find that issues. one. I don't. Where was it on? Was it YouTube? It was, was it on? No, it was Twitter. Go to go it was to Twitter. The, yeah, go to the thread. Oh yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I gotta, I gotta find this one. It's uh, a, you sent it to me. You sent yes, it to me. yes, yes, Classic yes. Thing, yeah. Uh, hold on. Wait. Yeah, this one right here is really good. It's uh, well, but it. To be fair, Father, it's in another language with no subtitles. Yeah. But we know, could but just, we could, you want me to just show it? That's anywhere? why it's so good, because you don't need to hear what he's saying. You can look at okay. his face. Let me, let me see. And you can look at the fact that it came out last, today or yesterday, whatever. It's like, oh, okay, this is where we're at, everybody. You know, and what's what I'm also seeing is that, let's see. It's interesting. It's, a, it's actually, it's a, it's a Sikh guy who posted it, but he said he calls himself a futurist. So I don't know whether he's doing it on purpose. He might be into it. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's into it. Whoa, be. that's crazy. I think he, I think he might be into this. Let me yeah. see. Yeah. Political yeah. elite. Oh no, I don't think so. Needle free vaccine patch. Oh, his, his, okay. Maybe we should watch a couple of these. He might be into these. <laughs> he might be into it. He might be into it. That's upsetting. Okay. So here's one. Needle-free vaccine patches are coming soon, say researchers and makers. Anyone who accepts the vaccine passports is clearly already primed for the ultimate marking. Oh, he's not into it. Which, be to, which will be to accept the QR codes marked directly on their, onto their skin. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see. If we Nothing don't get, to see here. If we don't get deplatformed after this, here I don't you go. know what it's going to do. Sweden, take. get your vaccine passports in a chip in your hand or elsewhere under the skin. It is increasingly popular to insert an IOB, I'm assuming that's Internet of Bodies chip or Internet of Biology chip into the body with different types of data. And now you can insert your COVID certificates in the chip. And look at how excited this guy is about it. <laughs> he's like, I'm getting married. Oh, he's got one like over his heart. He said, oh, he actually like moved it over. He's got it next to his heart. What? I, I can't. I can't do it. I can't, Father. It's insane. So at the end of the video, it shows another cat getting getting it implanted in his right hand. Just straight boom. Nothing to see here. Folks. Nothing to see. It's all good, everybody. Hail science. It's all good. Hail science. Okay, so my my uh, period of time yeah. is the uh, American, I totally nerd out about it, the American colonial period from 1520 to the Revolutionary War. Nobody knows anything about this period. And it's where it's, it's, it was the germination of all of the ideas, but also create like the most uh, in terms of per capita casualties, um, like devastating war per capita in US history was King Philip's war. People don't know that a colonial war that happened, uh, the colonists versus uh, the son of Son of Metacomet, or he was son of Metacomet. The the no, 
Metacomet, who was the son of the first Thanksgiving, uh, hmm. Massasoit, who was, who was his son after the good Thanksgiving stuff, they got into a war with his son, like 50, 50 years later, something like that. Um, wampum, people don't know about that, about the, that, that was the Iroquois currency made out of shells, the shell money that was used by the colonists. Uh, Ro Rhode Island was actually purchased by the colonists from the natives with wampum. Hmm. But the Dutch ruined it because the Dutch introduced like metal tools and they inflated the money supply. These people had been doing it for thousands of years with like stone tools, all this stuff, the founding of Harvard uh, as a, I mean, it was a seminary um, and all of the things around that. And then the the president and his, and his son, the Mathers being- What's the- What's the level of like a certain like influence of like some bricklayers and all of that? Like, is Hi. there like a strong? Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi. I mean, it's it's they're they're all over it. They're all over it all the way. They end up taking over, right? So it's like first you have these um, they're congregationalists. Mm -hmm. So they're you know so they're like breaking away, doing whatever. But they're like congregationalists. That's their structure. And so they build out all of these things. They model it on the, the natives, the Iroquois. And the Iroquois are like this highly advanced that they were playing lacrosse with like hundreds of people. There's these crazy like colonial drawings. The Iroquois would have like, the, it would be like their sim, uh, like um, ritualized battle, lacrosse, the, the game. Wow. Was a, it was a ritualized battle. So you can go and you can find these paintings by the colonialists and it'll be like, the field will be miles long. And there'll be, people would die. And there'll be all these warriors with these sticks running around, but like hundreds on the field. They're hitting each other with the sticks and everything. And it's how they would like settle conflicts. The, the constitution is basically based on the Iroquois constitution. Wow. They would use these wampum. They could read them. They made these belts and treaties with each other and they could read this. It's incredible. And the colonists like fell right into it. They just basically became another one of the Iroquois tribes like the ones that land, it's nobody knows, like everybody's like, ah, Pilgrim's Land and then American Revolution. It's 150 years. Wow. It's 150, New Hampshire at one period was completely, anar was completely anarchist. They like launched a war against the, um, uh, against the colonial governor and, and left him. And for four years, they had no, no formal government. They were just in anarchy. Like, it's crazy. That's insane. It's, a, it's an insane period of time that, like, nobody, the Salem witch trials and how that all, uh, all, all panned out. And then the interesting thing was that Cotton Mather and his father, Increase Mather, in, Cotton Mather is, like, the, the lead. He's the one who introduced inoculation to North America. Hmm. Okay. He was also, he became a, a member of the Royal Academy of Science. People will like this one. He was also the main person who was not only a defender at the time, but afterwards defended the Salem witch trials as they should have happened. He and his father, Increase Mather, who was the president of Harvard, wrote a book called The Wonders of the Invisible World, talking about how the devil was definitely in Salem. This was definitely going on. Whoa. Wonders of the Invisible World after the Salem witch trials after all of it and the lieutenant governor of massachusetts wrote the foreword and was like this is the most knowledgeable guy about these things and then he later goes on to become a member of the royal academy of science and introduces inoculation vaccination to north america wow. i'm telling you it's a fascinating period of time that no one talks about because of this stuff because of all of this no one talks about it i'm curious what that book says it's a pretty, it's pretty crazy. You could pull it up. You get a PDF of it. I Wonders of the Invisible World. I hadn't even thought about the Salem Witch Trials post-2020. Like now it's like, I see it completely differently. It's like, mm hmm. hmm. Well, there's, there is this interesting idea that he's playing with that like things got out of control, but the devil was definitely in Salem. This is, this is sort of his idea that he's going with. Now, mind you, his father was a president of Harvard. To get into Harvard, it was a seminary. To get the, the ground floor, 
you had to Latin and Hebrew fluently. You had to be fluent in Latin and Hebrew to get in. All of they had all is very rigorous, right? So these guys were like super, super scholars. Yeah, these, are, these weren't hucksters. No, these guys are super scholars. And he's like, the devil was in Salem. Mm. And he's talking about there's an invisible world. People need to be aware. And this was like, he was considered like the guy. Father, the we, guy. Should read that. we should read that book together. Like, yeah. I think it's, that that would be dope. Because you, know you know what I go to? I don't know how to explain it to you guys. I'm probably going to lose all credibility with everyone. So be it. It all, it all ends here, right? There's certain things that I encounter, which I'm trying to be really just honest right here. I'm not shook by certain things, you know? But there's things that, and maybe, maybe it's because I'm soft now, maybe because of the way the Lord's preserved me. But there's certain things that I haven't been shook by. So, I'm going to say this and people are going to roll their eyes at me, but it's not the celluloid of the film. That's not, that's, it, it's not like, it's not the thing. There's, there's, there's something transmitted in this movie that I was like, yeah, you know, which movie I'm going to talk about. The matrix. No, no, uh, no. The witch. The witch. I was about to say the witch. The witch. Yeah, no, 100%. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Even now, talk, I'm just like that. I just got That's goosebumps. Like, it's a yeah, problem. It's yeah. It's a problem. It's a problem, man. It's a problem. Even now, talking about, I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? Like. Well, man, Father, he here's, here's, something, here's something interesting, you know, about that. When the people don't, a lot of people don't know this. When the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, so people think that they like landed in something that was empty mm -hmm. but that whole area was had been full of people but the last five years before they landed it had been decimated by plague but the iroquois people got to understand the iroquois had a vast civilization that was stretched from there all the way down there were seven different tribes that were warring with each other but when the pilgrims landed they basically landed in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Plymouth was a, already a village. The rows were like hoed. They, they basically moved in to a village that had been decimated by plague. So do you have any theories on Roanoke? And I also would like to say really quickly that I think it was really weird that we all, that Cyprian and I both realized it was the witch at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, where did we pull that out of? Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how like we pulled that out of anywhere. Because it like, proved my point. Forgive me. It just it proves the point. No, no, one hundred percent. Like that is a that movie. Maggie had to leave the theater. Like yeah. when we went to go see it in the theater, like we had to. At, at what point? At what point did you know that it that it was really? At what point in that movie did you know that like? Oh no! It's this is really it. It's not just them like abusing this girl. How early did you know? Pretty early. Pretty early, right? Pretty early, maybe. The baby, I mean, baby. huh? The baby the disappearing. Baby. The baby yeah, disappearing. Like, yeah. And there's, there's, there's things that like. So, I, just for for an example, um, I, there's just certain things which I don't know if this is the place to get into it, but like, so I did a little unknown Father Turbo fact. I I have a comic book that I've done. Um, oh. I've, 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 I have, I'm a published comic book artist with other stuff, right? Steampunk stuff or whatever. But this is one that I, I've written and I, I've done the art and whatever. Pretty and, good. Thanks. And what's interesting is this, this comic predates that movie i don't want to say it again that movie by like years predates it like predates the script all of it right and there's a portion in there which i pulled from uh i don't 
I pulled it from somewhere, right? Uh, and it wasn't necessarily a book. And there's a section that it's, the story is about, there's, there's, a, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a slave named Gabriel Prosser, right? Who, um, Jamestown Rebellion, mm -hmm. which if he hadn't pulled it off would have been the most successful rebellion, right? Mm -hmm. But Gabriel Prosser was betrayed Right, um, and this betrayal undoes his whole rebellion. Now, the thing about Gabriel Prosser is that he's a fascinating character because number one, he was highly educated, highly skilled, and his master gave him a breadth of freedom. So he was known for going into Jamestown and being able to operate um, and you know, kind of you know, fraternize with with the other tradesmen. Now. The thing that's fascinating about Gabriel Prosser's rebellion, and this is the why it was so dangerous, was that it's the only rebellion at that time where history where history records that he had begun to actually influence and garner the support of indentured white men and and, oh. and freed men. So so this is why it was just it was just brutal and being put down. Because of, because of this very thing. And the other thing is, I suspect one of the reasons why it's so ignored <clears throat> and he's so ignored, especially now with, with so many quote unquote um, black historians, quote unquote, you know, woke people, quote unquote, um, Afrocentric and all this stuff is that it flies in the face of the narrative that they, the victimhood narr narration that they want to have because here you have this highly educated, highly respected slave who was basically walking out almost as among equals amongst his, amongst these white indentured servants. And it, it flies in the face of this complete, it gives you the real picture of the complexity of society mm -hmm. at the time, right? So anyways, mm -hmm. so Gabriel Prosser is it, this rebellion is put down. So anyways, I wrote this book, I wrote this comic based on the perspective of the Judas to Gabriel Prosser. Ah. And so he begins, he begins his running away and being pursued not only by the law, but also the word getting around of, of fellow slaves and fellow, you know, Africans, you know, black Americans wanting to kill this guy. So everyone is wanting to kill this guy, right? So Pull, I was pulling in just a lot of stuff with like hoodoo, which I, you know, mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff, bringing a lot of hoodoo, bring a lot of American mythology, right? But there's this whole section in regards of these witches that were, and, and the understanding of what was really happening there. That's mm -hmm. why I'm fascinated with all this. Anyways, I bring all this up because there's a portion in that, which this is me kind of exercising some of my demons, if you will, and understanding like I have a real thing with them. Right and and the kind of like, ugh, even now I'm talking about the the TV show again being couched, being couched in the yeah. kind of like all the tropes in which it's couched in whether it's Sabrina the Good Witch, or charmed, whether, you know what I mean, charmed, whatever, all the stuff it's couched in. I'm like you don't know what it is. I'm telling you what it is. Right. I've known so many quote unquote Wiccans. Like I go, you don't know what it is. Right. right? When you right. encounter one, a real one then you know what it is yep. and so anyways i say all that to say when i saw that movie that movie didn't put the impression on me it would it, it brought back for me got it do you understand what i'm saying yep. and in particular there's the stuff like it, that movie just get i don't want to talk about it anymore. it gets worse and worse as it goes on yes yeah. it does it gets harder to watch for sure i mean that those la i mean Ugh. yeah yeah mm -hmm. that was, so all all of that people don't understand that's such a real part of let me just so for all of you who's like what whatever um abramovich mm -hmm. you guys know who i'm talking about the artist right the spirit cooking she's one marina is that her name marina yeah. abramovich she's yeah oh yeah for sure she's one of them and so sure. this thing, 
So when you so when I when you hear what I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's my experience. That's what I'm talking about. The, that's real. And it's and again, she's one of them couched, couched yep. in, you know what I mean? Yep. Couched in something else, sophistication, all that stuff. I mean, wasn't the guy from My Love Lucy like saying like? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even. Yep. Bob, I'm yep. not even gonna say it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, 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 no. Ricky I'm not Ricardo. Say it. Oh, he was doing he was doing voodoo. He was doing on, yeah. summoning a god. Yep. yep. A voodoo, uh, a voodoo, what did they call it? Like a Orisha. Yeah. On on national TV in the 50s. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Whew, yeah. <laughs> so father, is there a time of history that is really interesting to you? Doesn't matter. Or is that it? <laughs> yeah. it matter now. <laughs> I mean, you can just throw something out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me. Like, it's interesting that, I mean, all those time periods for me have been moments, obviously, that I've geeked in, you know, I geek out on. But I think to, I think what, for me, what distinguishes it, or maybe to pull it apart is, it's the Amarna period. Mm. Um, this is like Am uh, Amenhotep. Uh, Akhenaten. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, Akhenaten, the heretic king, he's the monotheist king. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he moves the capital from uh, Thebes up to Amarna, or down actually, I can't remember, uh, to Amarna. And when you look at it, um, people are like, yeah, political ploy. And even my professor at the time, because I was just like, I, have my, I had one professor. He was just like, he literally told me one time, one of the last things he said to me is like, don't throw away your whole potential career on um, trying to chase down what you think happened with some like, <laughs> obscure pharaoh. You're wasting your time. I just I was just like, okay, man. But I'm just telling you, because my whole thing is he encountered God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He encountered like God, like our God, right? A pre pre-incarnate logos type of situation, right? Because when you look at all of the all the pharaonic basic the art of the periods like very very um idealized um they're given this very stoic features all these things that are that are in place and then when amenhotep comes in when akhenaten comes in changes his name to akhenaten he takes he first of all the the worship of the pharaoh he 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 does away with it he says i'm no longer I'm not the God, I'm the, I'm the priest of the God, of, of the Aton, right? There's one God, right? It's the Aton, I'm his priest, it's not the Pharaoh, right? So he, he, he removes his, his kind of like deification of the office and the place and the person of the Pharaoh, he, he removes it. He begins to open up the worship of the Aton to the people, right? Here's where it gets really interesting. His... I got statuary quote unquote thank you it it takes on this very intimate click on this one with the kids with his family so mm -hmm. yeah so if you notice this is him and his queen nefertiti right do you see how he's lovingly embracing his daughters mm -hmm. prior to that you would that that would have never happened in in, in the artwork of, of the pharaohs There's they were a, the parents of tutankhamun right yes so one of these is tut yes there there's there is an intimacy there that displays the character and the spirit in which god brings to people mm -hmm. right i i'm con, i'm convinced of it right um and even when you read the hymn to the his hymn to the aton it's almost like a proto psalter it's it's like <laughs> reading the Psalter in regards of devotion. And, and, and so it's, it's a fascinating time. Um, it cost him everything. Um, and so for, for me, I look at it like, that wasn't a political ploy. That wasn't a desire for like self. That was like, he encountered, he encountered something and it changed him and it made him more human. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, this, this embracing of family. This, his, his, his bust, his, it, it changes. It, it, some people are like, well, maybe he had some sort of um, 
some sort of like birth effect, whatever, but there, there is just this, there's a, there's an honesty. There's a humility. Yeah. There's a humility. Yeah. Like it looks like cool. a human being now. Yep. It doesn't look yep. like some stylized god. Hier- god. hieroglyph. He's right. Like, yeah, I'm, not, right. I'm not god. Like that, like that to me, I go like the, I look at that and go, this is the encounter. This is one like this. Cause they have said they they call him like the first personality of of history, you know. Mm. I think it was Freud who wrote a work on it saying that he yeah. was. Moses, Moses Moses and monotheism yeah Moses and monotheism yeah that's a that's a crazy book it was the last thing that Freud wrote before he died Mm -hmm. so father here's it here's something that um the essence energies distinction Mm -hmm. I think this is another thing that something that something that came when I when I learned about the essence energies distinction uh when so displaying the sun disc Mm-hmm. as as god mm-hmm. and then the rays coming down and then the hands on the yes. ends of the rays yep. Yep. was like yep the we it's that we know the god mm-hmm. in the energy yes. it's the energy yeah. that touches us because yeah. the essence is far away and it's yes. like ah oh, that's god yes <laughs> it's <Yeah>. god <laughs> totally yes yes and all pre-incarnate all that kind of you know, God always tapping. At, this is just theory. We're just talking, whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, everybody sue me. Uh, but this thought of, you know, Abraham was just the one who fully responded. Abraham was the one who fully responded and had all of the, everything lined up perfectly for Abraham. You know what I mean? But there's even speculation of like, well, his father might've even gotten the call, but wasn't able to, Mm. for whatever reason, completely like fall through. But for Abraham, he's the one, everything lines up and it's like, boom, you know? I sometimes think like, you know, whatever, whatever it was, you know, Akhenaten was one of the ones that God was, constantly was like trying to back into him you know always looking to find those opportunities to to shed some more of his light in a, in, in the darkened world in a world that had hardened its heart against him you know what i'm saying um just akhenaten just being like one of those one of those windows that was just a little bit clearer than all the other ones you know what i mean so fascinating that is that is definitely that's my time theory yeah that's a fascinating that's That's absolutely well we are way up on it andrew oh yeah well worth it though well worth it (laughs) yes absolutely i'm not worried about (laughs) it absolutely um all right well um good night everybody (laughs) good night (laughs) bye everyone